Welcome to NTD News Today. Here are our top stories. A Brazilian judge opens an inquiry into Elon Musk after the billionaire said he would restore social media accounts that had been blocked in the country. What Musk describes as a free speech crackdown in Brazil. Former President Trump gives an official abortion statement via social media. Find out what he's advocating for and how it could impact the election. A man longing for the return of his brother, a woman abducted into Gaza with her four-year-old baby and a girl. NTD's Kelly Wright was in Israel to hear from those grieving with six months gone by since the Hamas terror attack. Another massive cargo ship loses power near a bridge in New York City. How a potentially dangerous situation was brought under control. Moscow blaming Kyiv for attacks on a Russian-controlled nuclear power plant. Details of casualties and Ukraine's response. The eagerly anticipated total solar eclipse is finally here. What you need to know ahead of the event and how one Texas town transformed into a solar eclipse hotspot. This is NTD News Today, live from our NTD Global Headquarters. Here are Stephania Cox and Chris Beers. Hi, I'm David Lamb, sitting in for Chris Beers. And to begin the show, former President Trump is saying he believes abortion laws should be determined by individual states. He posted a social media video explaining his stance this morning. The states will determine by vote or legislation or perhaps both and whatever they decide must be the law of the land, in this case, the law of the state. Many states will be different. Many will have a different number of weeks. The Republican presidential candidate said he supported exceptions for rape, incest, and to protect the life of the mother. He also reiterated that he supports the availability of in vitro fertilization. Trump applauded the 2022 Supreme Court decision overturning Roe v. Wade praising his conservative picks to the court. Now he's signaling he wants to leave the decision in state hands, a move likely to earn support among swing state voters rather than with his base. And former President Trump's campaign says it raised over $50 million at a fundraiser in Florida over the weekend. That almost doubles what the Biden campaign recently said it raised at a high-profile event in New York City. Some of the GOP's biggest donors rallied behind Trump during a private dinner at billionaire John Paulson's home. Entity's Jeremy Sandberg has more on the fundraiser. Former President Trump, outside a private fundraiser Saturday, predicted a spectacular evening and said people just want change. Your country is really doing poorly. We're a laughing stock all over the world and we're going to get that change very quickly. A closed-door dinner at the home of billionaire investor John Paulson hosted around 120 high-profile guests, including hedge fund billionaire Robert Mercer, energy executive Harold Hamm, and casino mogul Steve Wynn. People, they wanted to contribute to a cause of making America great again, and that's what's happened. We're going to make America great again. A Trump campaign official said Trump spoke for 45 minutes about goals for a second term, including securing the border, reducing inflation, unleashing energy production, and extending 2017 tax cuts. The official said Trump also talked about ending Biden's EV mandates, protecting Israel, and avoiding global war. Trump's surrogate speaking included Vivek Ramaswamy, along with Senators Doug Burgum and Tim Scott. Trump asked guests to donate up to $800,000 to his campaign. The Palm Beach fundraiser collected money for the Trump 47 Committee, a joint fundraising operation that includes Trump's campaign, the RNC, and state party committees. It also directed funds to the Save America PAC that spent over $50 million on Trump's legal fees since the start of the year. President Biden and Senator Bernie Sanders reacted on X, saying they plan to ask Trump's, quote, good buddies to pay their fair share. This is his economic plan. That's what he wants to do. Cutting taxes for his friends, cutting Social Security for you. That makes me mad as hell, quite frankly. The hypocrisy is just outrageous. Campaign figures show Biden's campaign had over 190 million cash to start the month, double what Trump had on hand. Former First Lady Melania Trump is set to appear at a fundraiser for the Log Cabin Republicans later this month. Trump is holding another high-profile fundraiser in Atlanta, Georgia on Wednesday. Jeremy Sandberg, NTD News. And a Brazilian Supreme Court justice opened an inquiry into Elon Musk. 
This comes after Musk said he would reactivate accounts on social media platform X that were blocked in the country. Let's dive in. Musk challenged the decision by Justice Alexandre de Moraes, ordering the blocking of certain accounts. Musk said X would lift all restrictions because they were unconstitutional and called on de Moraes to resign. Musk, X, and Brazilian authorities did not disclose which social media accounts were ordered blocked. De Moraes is investigating so-called digital militias that have been accused of spreading misinformation during the term of former President Jair Bolsonaro. Musk said by blocking certain accounts, de Moraes was betraying the Constitution and the people of Brazil. The justice in response said Musk was waging a public disinformation campaign. In his decision, Moraes said X shall refrain from disobeying any court order already issued, including performing any profile reactivation that has been blocked by the Supreme Court. The justice said if X fails to comply with the order to block certain accounts, the company will be fined the equivalent of nearly $20,000 per day. De Moraes also opened an investigation to look into whether Musk engaged in an obstruction of justice. President Luiz de Silva's leftist government expressed support for De Moraes. In a social media post, Brazil's Solicitor General said we cannot live in a society where billionaires abroad have control of social media networks and violate the rule of law. Earlier, Musk said principles matter more than profit. He also made several posts on X urging Brazilian users to download a VPN to bypass government restrictions. And joining us now to discuss is the editor-in-chief for the Epic Times Brazil, Marcos Chatkas. Marcos, great to see you. To begin with, could you lay out for us what's happening and how it came to this? Okay, so this really started on Wednesday when we had the Twitter files Brazil uh, come out. So the Twitter files, um, as the audience uh, should know, is a series of reports that are, that are coming out uh, of Twitter. Elon Musk has released internal emails exchanged within the company to reporters um, to audit them and to get to you know, what was going on in the company before uh, he took over. Now, this is the first instance of Twitter files coming out that are related to Brazil. And what they essentially showed on Wednesday was that during the 2022 presidential campaign, um, Twitter was pressured by court order to illegally disclose information of people based on hashtags they used. Um, they were pressured into censoring people both inside the country and abroad. They monitored and were used as a tool to censor congressmen. And all of this was relating to a single side of the political spectrum to the conservative side on the 2022 elections. The outcry that came after the, the files were published basically led to you know, public outrage in Brazil. And after that, Musk himself started confronting Brazilian authorities about that, or at least questioning them about it. And then during the weekend, we just saw it erupt uh, with Justice de Moraes, Alexandre de Moraes, the lead authority which was uh, perpetrating these actions during the 2022 elections. Um, having not a public spat against him, but putting him in an inquiry, a legal inquiry, to investigate whether he'd be part of certain digital militias uh, engaged in quote-unquote fake news, which is itself a controversial uh, inquiry in Brazil that has been going on for five years, trying to claim uh, sort of fake news crimes that aren't even clear in Brazilian law. So that's basically the gist of it. Okay, so from the perspective of a journalist in the news industry, how could this ultimately impact freedom of the press as well as freedom of speech? You know, maybe Americans are not that clear on this, but for international observers that are, you know, keeping an, an eye out for Brazil, Br Brazil has been going down and down an, author an authoritarian path for a while now. And freedom of speech has been severely impacted in the country. Um, that was especially so during the 2022 elections. Uh, but even now, lots of subjects, you know, we're in that gray zone where you're not sure whether you can talk about something or whether you can't. It's as if rule of law doesn't fully apply in a, ser in a series of instances. Actually, four Brazilian congressmen were in D.C. on March 12 to denounce that on a press conference which was called by Congressman Chris Smith and denounced that abroad, including the son of former President Jair Bolsonaro, Eduardo Bolsonaro, which was there. Uh, and just to give an idea of how bad it is, Brazilian journalists who are living abroad have their social media blocked in Brazil, have had their bank accounts canceled, have had their passports uh, invalidated by Supreme Court order. And it's not as if there was a clean, you know, due legal process for that to happen. Uh, it's very unclear legally the basis for that to have happened. So uh, free speech is endangered in Brazil for a while now. What this does is that it threatens to further uh, um, you know, degrade freedom of speech, especially with the possibility of X being blocked nationwide, which is something that's reportedly being discussed as of yesterday 
we might see some of that today. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it actually happened, if X oh, was wow. actually blocked in Brazil. Okay, we'll be keeping our eye on that. So how significant is Elon Musk's de defiance, do you think, at this well, time? Well, I think it's... I think it's very, very significant um, because the international community maybe was not aware about this uh, to, the, to the degree that it is now after Musk's defiance. I mean, I think a lot of people don't realize uh, the, hard, the hard left socialist past of Lula da Silva. I think a lot of people, especially in Europe, think he's some sort of environmentalist. But um, there is a deep authoritarian past to the Brazilian hard left. And I think the international community is now coming to grips with it. It's getting to see um, how endangered freedom of speech is in Brazil. Uh, the awareness is a big deal, but not only the awareness is a big deal. Uh, right now, there's the possibility of the U.S. Uh, becoming more and more aware of this and of the U.S. actually doing something about it. Uh, as I've said, a few congressmen were in D.C. on March 12th uh, with a few journalists, and they were discussing the possibilities of U.S. Mm. action against Brazilian descent into authoritarianism. I think this brings awareness and a whole new level mm. uh, of possibilities to that. And so as people gain more awareness, for everyday people gaining that awareness, what can they do if they're concerned about free speech in Brazil? Well, um, I'm not sure I can answer that question, Steph. I'm not even sure uh, what Brazilians can do. Um, it's funny because like five or six years ago, it would be unimaginable that people would be so afraid uh, to speak up to authority in Brazil. I mean, the things you would see in Brazilian media five or six years ago were, you know, just like you'd see in any free country. Uh, political pundits would try to, you know, bring power to account, hold power to account. But that's right. basically uh, impossible now in Brazil. It's basically impossible because okay. even people who are willing to speak up, um, you know, they're just against a, a dead end. What well, are they supposed to do if their bank accounts get canceled, if their passports get canceled? I don't know what Brazilians can do and I don't know what foreigners can do, but awareness is surely a great first step. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Marcos Schottgast, for keeping us in the loop. Editor-in-Chief of the Epic Times Brazil. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Six months to the day that the terrorist group Hamas launched a deadly attack on Israel, the Israeli government said they were withdrawing some of their troops from Gaza. As the war enters a new phase, we take a look at events on the ground. After months of fighting, Israel's military said Sunday it's pulling forces from the city of Khan Yunus. The IDF says its 98th division concluded its mission and was leaving Gaza to recuperate and prepare for future operations. Israel confirmed one division will remain in Gaza. The withdrawal comes days after an Israeli strike killed seven aid workers, and President Biden told his Israeli counterpart that future U.S. support was tied to Israel taking steps to reduce civilian harm. On Sunday, Palestinian residents who fled the city returned to see what was left of their homes. We came to see what happened to the house, but we didn't find any houses in the first place. It's just rubble. You can't live here. Animals can't live here, so how is a person supposed to? The destruction is unreal. Before pulling out, the IDF said commando units raided and searched over a hundred locations in the Al Amal neighborhood of Khan Yunus. The military said it found a long tunnel and eliminated terrorists. Meanwhile, Israel confirmed it was sending a delegation to Egypt to discuss the future of the war. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu stating he would not cave to international pressure. I made it clear to the international community there will be no ceasefire without the return of hostages. It just won't happen. Israel says around 130 hostages are still held in Gaza. The army says they will have to enter the Rafah area along the border with Egypt to eliminate Hamas once and for all. Defense Minister Yoav Gallant confirmed that a Rafah mission is in the pipeline. Over a million people are currently sheltering in Rafah. Foreign powers have raised concerns about the humanitarian consequences of an attack there. Israel says it will evacuate civilians before launching an incursion. On another front, Israeli military says it's preparing to move from defense to attack on the border with Lebanon. The IDF and Lebanese terrorist group Hezbollah have been exchanging fire since the start of the Israel-Hamas war, with casualties reported on both sides. Israel said commanders of regular and reserve units are now ready to be deployed within just a few hours. The IDF gave a briefing Sunday on what has happened so far in six months of war. 
It says over 600 Israeli soldiers have been killed, while the IDF has struck over 32,000 terrorist targets. The IDF also said they facilitated the entry of more than 20,000 aid trucks into Gaza. Crowds gathered in New York City and Washington, D.C. yesterday demanding the release of hostages still held in Gaza. Take a listen. The rally in New York City was organized by families of hostages, marking six months to the day since they were captured by Hamas. Former Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett spoke at the rally. The whole world needs to apply pressure not on Israel, but on Hamas, on Qatar, on the people who are holding them every day. Congressman Jerry Nadler stressed the need to remember the hostages. And on this six-month anniversary, as we remember the heinous crimes committed by Hamas, we must continue to press the life-saving humanitarian aid for the Palestinian people, too. Hostage families spoke out at the rally in Washington, D.C., near the Lincoln Memorial. Both of Ilan Siegel's parents were taken hostage. So my name is Ilan Siegel. I'm a, the daughter of Aviva Siegel and Keith Siegel. They both were uh, were, capti were taken from their house in Kibbutz Kfaraza on the 7th of October. And uh, my mom, uh, fortunately, came home after 51 days, and my dad is still there. Ilan's mom, Aviva Siegel, reminded the crowd of what Hamas prisoners may be enduring. I was tortured. I was threatened. And I was thirsty. I had no human rights. I felt like nothing. But I came back. Similar rallies were held in Jerusalem, Toronto, London, Amsterdam, and Paris. Hamas is still holding about 130 hostages. NTD's Kelly Wright, host of America's Hope, was recently in Israel talking to the family members of hostages and others to hear how they're coping. NTD's Daniel Monahan has the report. Michael Levy's brother Orr is being held hostage in Gaza. Orr's wife was confirmed dead. My brother is an innocent civilian. He lost his wife who was murdered in front of his eyes. You have a two-and-a-half-year-old boy who's waiting for him at home. And his story is the same of 133 other stories of hostages. The couple arrived at the Nova Music Festival shortly before Hamas terrorists carried out the massacre. Levy says at the end of the day, it's a human story. It's not about Israel versus Palestinians. My brothers and his wife's only crime was that they wanted to celebrate peace and love in a music festival. They didn't hate anyone. They want to live in peace with the Palestinians. But they were brutally attacked by monsters. Levy says the terrorists will strike again if the world won't wake up. Maybe in Paris, perhaps in New York or London. This, his face, is a human being with a family, and hopes and dreams, and a little boy who is waiting for his father to come back. Levy discusses his two-year-old nephew, who is now without a mom. What can I say? I mean, the day we had to tell him that uh, his mom won't come back, it was the hardest day of our lives. I mean, how can you tell a two-year-old two, two boy that he won't get a hug from his mother? Jimmy Miller's cousin, Shiri Bibas, and her two kids, Ariel and Kafir, four years old and one year old, were taken hostage by Hamas from kibbutz near Oz. Shiri's husband and the father of the two boys was also taken hostage. They are not the, enemy, the enemies of the Hamas, and the Hamas took them over there to Gaza, and we don't know what's the situation of them. We don't know nothing about them. It's a very difficult situation. Miller hopes all the hostages will be reunited with their family soon. Because if we don't gonna have a good future with our families, nobody, even in Gaza, don't have a, don't gonna have any kind of future over there in this in this territory. NTD's Kelly Wright has been talking to hostage families, rabbis and pastors, Jewish and Arab people, to hear their tragic stories and try to find a path toward healing. The America's Hope host will have a special report on what he learned coming out in just a few weeks. 
Daniel Monahan, NTD News. Coming up, the impeachment trial of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas is set to start this week. We have the timeline. Boeing again comes under scrutiny as yet another plane experiences a frightening incident. What went wrong and a new FAA investigation. More in just a moment here on NTD News Today. I am so glad you ladies are here. You each have your own rooms. Thank you. Get settled in. I'll call you for dinner. Adopting teen sisters? It's a lot. Girls, you're gonna be late. Uh, you want breakfast? No thanks, we're good. They're always in their own world. You get Twice the work. Twice the surprises. Just try it. <laughs> but if you think of it that way, they're also twice as fulfilling. I think you should ask her yourself. Is it okay to call you mom? Of course you can. Hi, I'm Susan Lucci. I never thought about heart disease until I had my own heart event. I received two stents in my arteries, stents developed through research funded by the American Heart Association. Those stents saved my life. I have met so many survivors. Each of them tells a story that can be so helpful to women out there. Everything was pretty good. It was a very happy life. I was given the diagnosis that I had peripartum cardiomyopathy, which is basically a pregnancy-induced heart failure. They told me my only chance was a heart transplant. And the American Heart Association helped make that possible. Their research helped save me. I think everyone should support the American Heart Association. Call now or go to helpheart.org. For only $19 a month, just 63 cents a day, you can help fund the next medical breakthrough. Get the next person trained in CPR. The next hospital certified in high quality cardiovascular care. You can be part of that very important work that the American Heart Association is doing to save lives everywhere. Give $19 a month with your credit card and we'll send you this special t-shirt that you can wear to show that you are helping save lives. I'm grateful for just every day that I get with my children. I am very thankful for the American Heart Association. Heart disease is America's number one killer, and your support now can help save your life or the life of someone you love. Listen to your heart. The only reason I'm here today is because I did. So please call the number on your screen or go to helpheart.org now. Join me as a monthly donor today and help save even more lives. Join us on NTD Good Morning because we want you to stay informed. Kickstart your morning with the latest you missed overnight. Right, and don't forget that inspiration. Absolutely, so let's shine some light on the good news too. Tune in every weekday morning to NTD News. The Senate is set to pick up the impeachment case against Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas this week. Here's the timeline. The articles of impeachment will be presented to the Senate on Wednesday. That's when the trial officially begins. House impeachment managers will act as prosecutors against Mayorkas. Senators are scheduled to be sworn in as jurors on Thursday. Mayorkas faces two articles of impeachment. The first article charges him with refusal to comply with the law. The second accuses him of breach of public trust. It's estimated that over 10 million illegal immigrants cross the border under the Biden administration. The Democrat-controlled Senate is widely expected to dismiss the impeachment trial against Mayorkas. The back and forth between Texas Governor Greg Abbott and New York City Mayor Eric Adams continues. Last week, Adams invited the governor to stay at one of New York's migrant shelters. Adams said that's for Abbott to see what he has created. The governor was on Fox News yesterday responding to Adams' remarks. 
What Mayor Adams needs to do, uh, he needs to stop talking boldly about uh, illegal immigration and the migrants that Texas is sending there, and he needs, he needs to step up and do his own job because look at the dangers in New York City under his watch. Abbott pointed to recent crime events in the Big Apple and the dangers of the city subway system. He also responded to allegations he is using illegal immigrants as political pawns. Abbott says President Biden is the one using immigrants as political pawns to appease far-left officials and voters. In the wake of the Baltimore Bridge disaster, a large cargo ship lost power near New York City near the Verrazano Narrows Bridge. The Coast Guard got a report that the ship lost power on Friday as it was moving in a shipping lane called the Kilvan Cole. The Kilvan Cole is a narrow and busy waterway with ships going to and from ports. It connects Staten Island and Bayonne, New Jersey. Tugboats helped the ship until it got power back and anchored near the bridge. The Coast Guard made sure the ship's power system was fixed before letting it continue its journey to South Carolina. Now for a look at the Baltimore Bridge. Yesterday, salvage crews began removing containers from the cargo ship after the crash last month. That's an important step toward the full reopening of one of the nation's main shipping lanes. The removal of the containers from the Dali Cargo ship will continue this week as well as weather permits. Officials say crews are making progress, removing sections of the bridge that lay across the ship's bow. So far, 32 vessels have passed through temporary channels created on either side of the wreckage. Maryland Governor Wes Moore said yesterday, the target for making the shipping lane fully operational is the end of May. Some scary moments aboard a Southwest Airlines jet yesterday. A plane that left Denver's International Airport for Houston had to make an emergency landing back in Denver after an engine cover fell off during takeoff. The cover struck part of the plane's wing. FlightAware says the plane returned to safety to Denver about 35 minutes after it took off. No one was hurt. Passengers were put on a different jet and flown to Houston. The Federal Aviation Administration is investigating the incident. The FAA is also looking into several other recent engine issues on Southwest fleet of Boeing planes. Boeing has come under fire since a door plug panel tore off an Alaska Airlines jet mid-flight back in January. And two key lawmakers say they struck a deal on a draft of a bipartisan data privacy bill. The measure would restrict the kind of data that tech companies can collect and give Americans the power to prevent the selling of personal information. Democratic Senator Ma Maria Cantwell and Republican Representative Kathy McMorris Rogers said the new bill would give people more control over information they share online. It would require companies to disclose if data has been transferred to foreign adversaries. They said the plan gives the Federal Trade Commission and State Attorneys General board broad authority to oversee consumer privacy issues and hold violators accountable. The bill doesn't ban targeted advertising, but allows consumers to opt out of it. It requires consent before sensitive data can be transferred to a third party. The bill would require annual reviews of algorithms to ensure they do not put individuals at risk. Authorities arrested one suspect in connection with a fire at the office of Senator Bernie Sanders in Vermont. Shant Shogamonian was arrested Sunday. He's charged with arson. The Justice Department says a suspect was recorded on security video spraying a liquid near the door of Sanders' office and then igniting it with a handheld lighter. Sanders was not in the building at the time. The fire was quickly put out by the sprinkler system, but it did cause damage to the door and surrounding areas. The Burlington Fire Department said the floors below were damaged by the water. No injuries were reported. The Justice Department said the suspect could face between 5 and 20 years in prison and a $250,000 fine. Millennials and Gen Z are experiencing a new wave of anxiety when it comes to medical costs. According to a new study, 67% of Gen Z and 62% of Millennials avoid seeking health care because of the price. That's compared to 46% of Americans overall. The study was commissioned by an insurance firm, Assurance IQ. A similar study done last year by the Federal Reserve found that a quarter of all Americans went without medical care in 2022 because of the price. Analysts say seniors with Medicare could pay about $33 more out of pocket each month. 
The Biden administration stated they want to increase access to care, but that means lower funding for the Medicare Advantage insurance program. For Insight, I spoke with former U.S. Representative Anne-Marie Burkle. Burkle has also served as commissioner for the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission. And welcome. It's good to see you again. Now, what do you make of the Biden administration cutting funding for Medicare Advantage? Well, thank you so much for having me back. I appreciate it. Well, it's interesting uh, because at the State of the Union, the president specifically said, if anyone cuts Medicare, uh, I'll stop them. And in fact, on April 1st, the president and CMS did actually cut Medicare Advantage for 33 million Americans, which is so, uh, I mean, it's just, it's absolutely what we don't want him to do uh, in terms of benefits for the seniors. Now, what's the economic impact on the 33 millions or the seniors on the Medicare Advantage plan? So what it means for seniors who have Medicare Advantage and overwhelmingly seniors love Medicare Advantage because it's cheaper than the traditional Medicare. And so what it will do is, it, and the uh, analysts have actually talked about, it will raise the out-of-pocket expenses for seniors which is not insignificant in this environment with inflation, with all the other costs being up for seniors on fixed income uh, to, to increase their out-of-pocket costs. And that's what his cuts to Medicare Advantage will do. Now, Anne, how significant would this move, the, the cutting, impact Biden's re-election campaign? Well, I think it's important for the American people, in particular seniors who have chosen Medicare Advantage, to know that this is what was done on April 1st. And it wasn't a joke. It, it really um, is a very serious issue for seniors. Um, and I think it would really impact how people would vote. They did a poll and for the American people, roughly 90% said they would consider a candidate who understood the cost of health care and had an agenda to lower those costs. That's not insignificant. And then beyond that, 39% of the American people said, if a candidate will consider the cost of health care and take those into consideration, they would consider crossing party lines. So you can see how important health care and the cost of health care are to the American people. Now, back in March, former President Trump said he will never do anything that will jeopardize or hurt Social Security or Medicare. Do you think Trump can stand by that? I think he can. And the reason he can do it is if he keeps Medicare Advantage in place and doesn't do and actually reverses what this president just did. Medicare Advantage, it's estimated that use it of the Medicare Advantage programs versus traditional Medicare will keep Medicare solvent for 17 more years. That is so, I mean, that's incredibly important for Medicare and the Medicare program. But what the president and what the Democrats want to do is they want to get all Americans into the traditional Medicare plan where the government has complete control. And I'll just say, because Medicare Advantage is a public-private partnership, and so it's not all government. And so the Democrats don't like that. President Biden, they don't like, he doesn't like it. He wants Americans in traditional Medicare, and that's why he cut Medicare Advantage and, and all of the wonderful benefits that people get from it. All right, Anne, thank you so much for joining us and thank you for your insight. Thank you so much for having me. Always good to see you. Up ahead, an ex-Massachusetts city councilor appears to be seen in a video in, at a Russian military recruitment center. He fled the U.S. earlier this year before he was set to appear in court. Russia now declaring a federal emergency. Thousands of homes were flooded after a dam broke. We'll have the details soon when we return. What if you could whiten your teeth by simply brushing your teeth? Now you can with Smile Actives, the teeth whitening breakthrough that safely gets your teeth white and keeps them white every day just by brushing your teeth. I never thought that whitening my teeth could be so easy. I just put the gel on the brush, the toothpaste on it, brush, and I can see my white teeth. Simply add Smile Actives to any toothpaste and our patented PolyClean technology activates into a powerful microfoam that penetrates into the enamel surface to safely lift and remove stains. You need a simple way to whiten your teeth. 
without strips, without trays, without going to the dentist. And it was about time that a product was developed that you would be able to do that with just brushing. And now, Smile Actives is even better with new Pro Whitening Gel with 33% greater whitening power, clinically shown to whiten teeth faster, up to eight shades. 100% of users saw whiter teeth on food stains, coffee and wine stains, even on veneers, crowns, and dentures. I eat the blueberries, I drink the coffee, and I know that Smile Actives will keep my teeth white every day. If you could use something so easy like Smile Actives to take yellow teeth to white teeth, why wouldn't you? Why spend hundreds of dollars for whitening treatments at the dentist when now you can whiten your teeth with new Smile Actives Pro Whitening Gel every time you brush your teeth? Call or go to smileactives.com and for a limited time, get new Pro Whitening Gel for just $24.95. Order in the next five minutes and buy one, get one absolutely free for just $24.95. That's two for one and save 58%. We'll even include free shipping. Get your teeth whiter guaranteed or return it within 60 days for your money back. I smile every day now. <laughs> The difference is literally night and day. So now I'm always smiling, always choosing, because now my teeth are much whiter. This offer is not available in stores, so call or click now before the special buy one, get one free offer goes away. A performance that truly matters. For each and every one of us. This is what you've been waiting for. Shen Hyun. Coming to Lincoln Center, April 3rd through the 14th. Buy tickets now at ShenYun.com. Meet the scan. A simple procedure whose mission is to detect lung cancer early. I'm here to save you! but I feel fine. That's great, but you may still be at high risk for lung cancer. Oh man, that's a new fence. If you smoke, early detection could save your life. Learn more at savedbythescan.org. I'm Arian Pastar in South America, Brazil, and we are NTD News. A former Massachusetts city councilor was seen in a video that appears to show him at a Russian military enlistment center. He fled the U.S. earlier this year before a court date on child pornography charges. He's also a former Massachusetts National Guardsman. Wilmer Pueyo Moda served on the Holyoke City Council. He was set to appear in court after police found explicit photos of an underage girl on his phone in 2020. Authorities said the girl was 17. Pueyo Moda said he thought the girl was 22. His court date was scheduled for January this year. Pueyo Moda also reportedly said in an interview with Russian TV that he wanted to be a Russian citizen. Another video appears to show him fighting for Moscow in February when Russian forces took the Ukrainian town of Avdivka. And now we have some short headlines from Germany and other European countries. The UN's nuclear watchdog says a drone attack damaged the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant in Ukraine. The agency says the drone attack on Sunday killed one person in three direct hits against the Russia-controlled facility. The nuclear watchdog said damage to one of the facility's six main reactors has not compromised nuclear safety. It called the strike a violation of basic principles for protecting Europe's largest plant. The agency's director general warned of an increased risk of a major nuclear accident. He called for an immediate cease to reckless attacks. Russian authorities accuse Ukraine of using exploding drones in a series of attacks on the plant. Ukraine denied any involvement. And Russia declaring a federal emergency. Thousands of people had to evacuate due to heavy floods in the Orenburg region, which is close to Kazakhstan. Over 6,000 homes were flooded. The floods caused a dam to break on Friday. Officials are now investigating suspected construction violations. Local authorities said the dam could withstand water levels up to around 18 feet. On Saturday morning, the water level was over 30 feet high. 
Floodwaters have inundated multiple Russian provinces and neighboring parts of Kazakhstan in recent days. The president of Kazakhstan said the flooding may be the country's largest natural disaster in 80 years. And Nicaragua wants the International Court of Justice to stop Germany from exporting weapons to Israel. The court already ruled that it's plausible Israel violated some rights guaranteed under the 1948 Genocide Convention. Nicaragua now argues that Germany is violating the convention by continuing to supply Israel with arms. Israel has denied allegations of genocide and said it has the right to defend itself. German officials argue the court case is not justified, saying they didn't violate the convention. Germany today sending off the first 20 soldiers on a permanent deployment to Lithuania. The two countries agreed to station a German brigade in the Baltic state after last year. Officials said it's a historic moment. Germany's defense minister today said that it's the first time Germany is permanently stationing such a unit abroad. He called it an important day for NATO and its defense capability. The goal is to deploy more 5,000, almost 5,000 troops and around 200 civilians by 2027. And Slovakia is set for a new president. Peter Pellegrini won the country's election over the weekend. Pellegrini's win solidifies the influence of the current prime minister, Robert Fico. The president-elect says he supports the prime minister and the government's agenda. Fico began his fourth term last October. He's shifted Slovakia's foreign policy towards pro-Russian positions. Fico's coalition also halted Slovakia's arms shipments to Ukraine. And up ahead, the eagerly anticipated solar eclipse is finally here. What you need to know ahead of the event and how one Texas town transformed into a solar eclipse hotspot. Japan's cherry blossom season turns the country into a sea of delicate pink and white. Parks and gardens make special preparations for millions of visitors. More on that shortly, here on NTD News Today. Hi, I'm Caleb and this is my story. I was born with osteogenesis imperfecta or brittle bone disease. I have broken my bones almost 200 times and I have had 11 surgeries. But I didn't let that stop me. I love to bike ride, climb, race, and I'm learning how to stand and walk. But I can only do all of this because of generous people like you and Shriners Hospitals for Children. Because of people like you, Shriners Hospitals for Children has helped more than 1.3 million kids just like me, regardless of their family's ability to pay. Shriners Hospitals for Children is only able to provide this world-class, life-changing medical care because of the generous gifts of people just like you. Because of you, I can ride my bike. I can play basketball. Because of people like you, I can run. I can smile. Will you send your love to the rescue today? When you go to loveshriners.org right now and give just 63 cents a day, you're helping kids just like me. Like me. Like me. When you give today, we'll send you this adorable love to the rescue blanket as a thank you and a reminder of the love you gave to a kid just like me. Your gift, no matter how small, can help a child today. This is your moment to make a difference. When you pick up your phone, you know you have it right there, and call to give. You're helping kids like me. Thank you. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you. Please call or go online now. If operators are busy, please call again or give right away at loveshriners.org. Your gift makes a difference. Thank you for giving. When I started my pillow, it was just a problem solution, one product company. Well, since then, with the help of my dedicated employees, we now have hundreds of products, some you might not even know about. To get the word out, we're having a $25 extravaganza. Two pack multi use my pillows, $25. My pillow sandals, $25. And for the first time ever, our six pack towel sets. You guessed it, just $25. 
Our brand new four pack dish towels, $25. And I've never done this before. Premium my pillows with all new Giza fabric, any size, any loft level, even king size for only $25. And there's so much more. So go to mypillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code for our $25 extravaganza. Order $75 and over. Your entire order ships absolutely free. I'm Iris Tao at the White House, and we are NTD. One Texas town is about to transform into a solar eclipse hotspot. Bandera, Texas is in the middle of the path of totality. And with millions of people hitting the road to see the eclipse for themselves, the town is seeing a massive population boom. Welcome to Bandera, you guys. It's the cowboy capital of the world. Lots of Western bands and good dancing. Bandera, Texas is in the path of totality for Monday's solar eclipse. The town is expected to experience more than four minutes of darkness. Rosa, I know you're over there, but I can't see you. I can't see you. Eclipse mania has taken hold of Bandera. Horses and dinosaurs are donning eclipse glasses, even eyewear for a giant cowboy. One monster eclipse party. <laughs> we are downtown Bandera, Texas. Behind us here is the courthouse. Bandera's population of under a thousand. Everybody knows everybody. Hi, Eileen. Is expected to quadruple Monday, says the mayor. At 11th Street Cowboy Bar, the meet, medium rare, and greet is about the eclipse. Millions are expected to flock to Texas and more than a dozen U.S. states in the celestial path of totality. Some officials are worried about traffic jams. In Bandera, cowgirls solved that problem. I'm going to jump on Brewster <laughs> and I'm going to ride by everybody and I'll do my little princess wave even. <laughs> Eclipse mania expected to add $6 billion to the U.S. economy in one estimate. Texas a slice of the astronomical pie, $1.4 billion. The Eclipse merchandise in Bandera, they sold like that, is practically sold out. So are venues like the historic Dixie Dude Ranch. Our first reservation for the Eclipse was in 2017. I think we sold out completely about four years ago. What never runs out here? are the good people and a moon pie. Moon pie? It's the eclipse, don't oh, you know? for the eclipse. <laughs> Thank Great. you. And the good times. A colossal camera designed to map the night sky is set to take photos for the next decade. Let's check it out. A team of scientists has just completed building the world's biggest digital camera designed specifically to take a look at this magnificent universe of ours. It took nearly two decades for the SLAC National Accelerator Lab to design and construct this gargantuan camera sporting three billion pixels and a five foot wide optical lens. And you thought your old clunky digital camera back in the day was big. The LSST camera is headed to an observatory in Chile to embark on its own decade long journey of a near constant observation of the southern skies. Its massive lens will snap a 15 second multi wavelength exposure of the sky every 20 seconds for 10 years. Researchers say they'll use the staggering amount of data to create the most comprehensive map of the night sky ever, which could yield new insights into the formation of our galaxy, the nature of dark matter, the expansion of the universe, the sky's the limit. When tech and nature meet, anything's possible. Japan's cherry blossoms are blooming. The flower, known locally as Sakura, is the country's favorite. And today's Andrew Thomas has the latest on that season. Cherry blossom season is a particularly cherished time of year in Japan. The 2024 bloom came five days later than usual, catching many tourists and the tourism industry off guard. The forecast was uh, several days delayed than last year. Um, so it is very difficult uh, to inform the guests of when uh, will be uh, fully bloom cherry blossoms. Japan's cherry blossom season is renowned all over the world. During this time, the Japanese landscape transforms into a sea of delicate pink and white. Parks and gardens make special preparations for their arrival before millions visit to enjoy the flowers. 
Cherry blossom season is one of the uh, very uh, well-known uh, season throughout the year. Uh, so, of course, um, a lot of uh, guests from overseas. Many of the tourists in Tokyo's Asakusa district plan their trip based on Sakura season. I suppose with all the festivals and like, you know, events they have around cherry blossoms in Japan, I would definitely say it's, you know, very special. Japan has been experiencing an unprecedented influx of foreign visitors since lifting pandemic era restrictions. Um, I came to Japan uh, in this season mostly for the cherry blossoms, but um, also because it's colder where I'm from, it's uh, very hot already, so it's nice to come for the weather. This event in Tokyo's Nihonbashi district was planned six months in advance. Nihonbashi was the starting point of the Tokaido route in the Edo period. And since that period, Nihonbashi was a place where many people gathered. With that in mind, we wanted to use cherry blossom season to bring people together. And we also believe this will bring a cheerful atmosphere to the area. For many, the cherry blossom season symbolizes not only the start of spring, but also new beginnings. Andrew Thomas, NTD News. And in health news, a new study has found that people who sleep in on weekends and make up the weekday sleep deficit have lower rates of stroke and heart disease. Here's Entity's Gina Marie with Strong Mind and Body. We can catch up sleep is more than just beauty rest. In fact, sleeping in could provide a major health upgrade. The study was published in the journal Sleep Health. It found that people who slept longer on the weekends making up for lost sleep during the week had a lower prevalence of cardiovascular diseases such as stroke, coronary heart disease and angina which is chest pain due to reduced blood flow. The research was based on health data from nearly 3,500 American adults. They participated in the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey. The researchers assessed the self-reported weekday and weekend sleep durations of the participants. They also assessed medical indicators of their cardiovascular health. This included conditions such as heart disease, hypertension and diabetes. Cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death globally and in the United States. It affects approximately 92 million Americans. The American Academy of Sleep Medicine recommends at least 7 hours of sleep each night for adults. This helps to maintain proper physical and mental health. Unfortunately, nearly 35% of Americans sleep less than 7 hours nightly. Half often feel sleepy during the day, according to the National Sleep Foundation. This is not surprising considering a third of adults fail to meet the recommended sleep levels according to the CDC. Sleep helps to reduce cardiovascular disease risk by lowering blood pressure for longer periods. Poor sleep also correlates with higher inflammation. This may elevate cardiovascular disease risk according to the American Heart Association. So the question is how to get better sleep. Here are some simple tips. Number one, maintain consistency. Keep the same sleep and wake times each day, including on the weekends. Number two, relax the sleep environment. Ideal sleep settings feature darkness, quiet and cool temperatures. Number three, no screens. Remove electronics such as TVs, computers and smartphones from the bedroom. Number four, no eating before bed. Avoid large late meals and refrain from caffeine and alcohol. And number five, exercise daily. This can make falling asleep at night easier. If falling asleep proves difficult after 20 minutes in bed, temporarily leave the bedroom and engage in relaxing low light activities. This includes reading, light yoga stretches, drinking a cup of herbal tea or a warm shower. You want to steer clear of stimulating electronics or bright lights during this time. Try candles for ultimate relaxation, just don't burn the house down. Around the clock, original news coverage. Visit us at ntd.com or download our NTD app. Stay with us and we'll bring you more in the next two hours. What's happened to this world we're living in? Why? For the four years he has been on this earth, he has known nothing but war. Wherever I go, the things I see, I just want to turn away. The dreams I have, the stories I could tell, 
will they still be possible? This year, more than ever, I need a brand new world. A clean world. Where I can improve myself and be inspired. My stage can be anywhere and everywhere. But it begins here. Changing World, a brighter way of life. Presenting the heritage of traditional Chinese martial arts, fostering martial ethics, and reviving the true tradition. The preliminaries for the 2024 NTD International Traditional Martial Arts Competition will be held across New York, Taiwan, and Germany. The Grand Finals will be broadcast live online worldwide in August 2024. For more information, please call 1-888-477-9228. This is it, the culmination of everything our young athlete has worked for these past months. He's filled with determination. You can see it in his face. Is today the day he overcomes? And here we go. There is no defense in the world that will keep him at bay. He's on fire. Nothing can stop him. Watch him as he heads towards the goal. Oh, he's blocked hard. But that doesn't stop him. He's a warrior. He's back up. His eyes are on the goal. He's set up for the shot. He shoots. Goal! Achieving goals like this is only possible with the monthly support of people just like you. Please call the number on your screen right now and give your monthly support to Shriners Hospitals for Children so other children can reach their goals too. If you give just $19 a month, only 63 cents a day, we will send you your very own Love to the Rescue Blanket as a reminder of the love you're giving us. Because of monthly support of people like you, nothing is stopping me from achieving my goals. And here we go. There is no defense in the world that will keep him at bay. He's going left. Oh, he fakes right and continues. Look at those moves. He takes the shot. Goal! Good shot. <laughs> Please call or go online now. If operators are busy, call again or go to loveshriners.org to give right away. Your monthly gift helps kids achieve their goals. Goal! If you're buzzed and doing this, To make yourself feel okay to drive? ZWX. Ah. You're not okay to drive. Y G K L V W. Uh, regular U.
Welcome to NTD News Today. Here are our top stories. A Brazilian judge opens an inquiry into Elon Musk after the billionaire said he would restore social media accounts that had been blocked in the country, what Musk describes as a free speech crackdown in Brazil. Former President Trump gives an official abortion statement via social media. Find out what he's advocating for and how it could impact the election. A man longing for the return of his brother, a woman abducted into Gaza with her four-year-old and a baby. NTD's Kelly Wright was in Israel to hear from those grieving with six months gone by since the Hamas terror attack. Another massive cargo ship loses power near a bridge in New York City. How a potentially dangerous situation was brought under control. Moscow blaming Kyiv for attacks on a Russian-controlled nuclear power plant. Details of casualties in Ukraine's response. Read that. Japan's cherry blossom season turns the country into a sea of delicate pink and white. Parks and gardens make special preparations for millions of visitors. This is NTD News Today, live from our NTD Global Headquarters. Here are Stephania Cox and Chris Beers. Hi, I'm David Lamb, sitting in for Chris Beers. And to begin the show, former President Trump is saying he believes abortion laws should be determined by individual states. He posted a social media video explaining his stance this morning. The states will determine by vote or legislation or perhaps both and whatever they decide must be the law of the land, in this case, the law of the state. Many states will be different. Many will have a different number of weeks. The Republican presidential candidate said he supported exceptions for rape, incest, and to protect the life of the mother. He also reiterated that he supports the availability of in vitro fertilization. Trump applauded the 2022 Supreme Court decision overturning Roe v. Wade praising his conservative picks to the court. Now he's signaling he wants to leave the decision in the hands of the states, a move likely to earn support among swing state voters rather than with his base. Six months to the day that the terrorist group Hamas launched a deadly attack on Israel, the Israeli government said they were withdrawing some of their troops from Gaza. As the war enters a new phase, we take a look at events on the ground. After months of fighting, Israel's military says Sunday it's pulling forces from the city of Khan Yunus. The IDF says its 98th division concluded its mission and was leaving Gaza to recuperate and prepare for future operations. Israel confirmed one division will remain in Gaza. The withdrawal comes days after an Israeli strike killed seven aid workers, and President Biden told his Israeli counterpart that future U.S. support was tied to Israel taking steps to reduce civilian harm. On Sunday, Palestinian residents who fled the city returned to see what was left of their homes. We came to see what happened to the house, but we didn't find any houses in the first place. It's just rubble. You can't live here. Animals can't live here. So how is a person supposed to? The destruction is unreal. Before pulling out, the IDF said commando units raided and searched over a hundred locations in the Al Amal neighborhood of Khan Yunus. The military said it found a long tunnel and eliminated terrorists. Meanwhile, Israel confirmed it was sending a delegation to Egypt to discuss the future of the war. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu stating he would not cave to international pressure. I made it clear to the international community there will be no ceasefire without the return of hostages. It just won't happen. Israel says around 130 hostages are still held in Gaza. The army says they will have to enter the Rafah area along the border with Egypt to eliminate Hamas once and for all. Defense Minister Yoav Gallant confirmed that a Rafah mission is in the pipeline. Over a million people are currently sheltering in Rafah. Foreign powers have raised concerns about the humanitarian consequences of an attack there. Israel says it will evacuate civilians before launching an incursion. On another front, Israeli military says it's preparing to move from defense to attack on the border with Lebanon. The IDF and Lebanese terrorist group Hezbollah have been exchanging fire since the start of the Israel-Hamas war, with casualties reported on both sides. 
Israel said commanders of regular and reserve units are now ready to be deployed within just a few hours. The IDF gave a briefing Sunday on what has happened so far in six months of war. It says over 600 Israeli soldiers have been killed, while the IDF has struck over 32,000 terrorist targets. The IDF also said they facilitated the entry of more than 20,000 aid trucks into Gaza. And here to discuss the state of the war, we have Jonathan Tobin. He's the editor-in-chief of Jewish News Syndicate. Welcome, Jonathan. Israeli forces took out a top Hezbollah commander last night. What's been the impact so far, and what do you expect to come? Well, I think Israel is seeking to deter Hezbollah and Iran from escalating the war further. I think um, Iran views Hezbollah as its failsafe. Um, I don't think they're willing to uh, start a full-scale war. They're, they've been making a lot of threats, as they always do. But Hezbollah is uh, always kept in reserve because they view that as their last uh, ace in the hole if the United States or, or Israel were ever to attack Iran itself and its nuclear program. So I think there, it's a case of trying to get Hezbollah to stop shooting at northern, at northern Israel. You know, they didn't join Hamas in the war that Hamas started on October 7th out of fear of uh, what Israel would do in retaliation. But they have made parts of northern Israel unlivable. You know, one of the least reported stories is the fact that there are hundreds of thousands of Israelis, mostly from southern Israel, but also northern Israel, who are currently refugees in their own country because they can't go home because their homes in southern and northern Israel have been re rendered impossible to live in because of the security threats, and they can't go home until this war is finished and Hamas is finished. And this is a little-known story abroad, uh, certainly not as much as the other headlines in relation to Israel. So why was it important for Israel to take out this particular commander, do you think? Well, I, 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 I can't tell you why that particular commander, but I think as with all of Israel's efforts to force Hezbollah in Iran to stand down, they're looking to send a signal to them that they cannot attack okay. Israel with impunity. Okay, and do you think that Israel will need more support from the U.S. heading into what could be more active conflict with Iran and Hezbollah? Well, I, I think Israel can't count on more. So, I mean, the, the reality is that the Biden administration has turned on Israel. That's the impact of the recent events in Gaza in which the president used an unfortunate accident of war as an excuse to make a, a threat for an aid cutoff. They're also threatening Israel that they will allow damaging resolutions to be passed in the UN Security Council that threaten Israel's existence. Um, Biden is using every, uh, every threat he can because he is, I think, wrongly convinced that before he can defeat Donald Trump, he's got to defeat Benjamin Netanyahu and stop the war against Hamas. Unfortunately, the ultimate impact of that is that he's trying to keep Hamas alive, um, preventing Israel from finishing its war and finishing off Hamas. And that pretty much dooms the hostages that Hamas is still holding, because while the U.S. is pushing, putting pressure on Israel, Hamas has no incentive at all to make any sort of a deal to release the people that they have held in captives for over six months. Yeah, the Biden administration's tune, or the tides do seem to be turning in, in terms of its approach to Israel, despite the Biden administration saying that they remain steadfast in support of Israel. Uh, so it, you've spoken about the impact on hostages. What else could be the impact of this on the region? Well, um, the long-term impact of this is terrible for the United States, never mind Israel, because um, by allowing Hamas to survive, by preventing Israel from finishing Hamas off, that's a huge victory for Iran because Hamas is its ally. That makes Iran seem like the strong horse of the region, uh, undermines uh, American efforts to um, bring about a greater circle of peace between the Arab world and Israel, but also undermining America's own interests in the region as Iran gets stronger, bolder, and opens up the West for more terrorism because Iran is the leading state sponsor of terrorism in the world. And the more it is encouraged, the more its auxiliaries in Lebanon and in Gaza are allowed to continue threatening 
not just Israel, but the rest of the world, ultimately Americans will pay a price for that. All right. Thank you so much. Jonathan Tobin, editor-in-chief of the Jewish News Syndicate. Appreciate it. Thank you. Dwayne The Rock Johnson says he has no plans on endorsing President Biden or anyone else this election year. He said he is concerned with the state of America right now. The endorsement that I made uh, years ago with Biden was one I thought was the best decision for me at that time. Am I going to do that again this year? That answer is no. I'm not going to do that because what I realized, what that caused back then was something that tears me up in my guts back then and now, which is division. And I wouldn't do that because my goal is to bring our country together. I'm, I believe in that, in my DNA. Johnson is set to headline one of two nights of the annual WrestleMania event this weekend in Philadelphia. Speaking ahead of this event, Johnson said that he believes the American people will make the right decision in November. In 2021, the Fast and Furious star said that he would run for U.S. president if he felt he had enough support from Americans. But in this interview with Fox, he rejects any intention of running. Could a technicality keep President Biden off the general election ballot in Ohio? The problem is the timing of the Democratic National Committee's selection process for presidential candidates and a deadline set by the Ohio Secretary of State's office for certifying the nominee. Ohio Secretary of State Frank LaRose raised this issue in a letter to Ohio Democratic Chair Liz Walters. LaRose pointed out the deadline for certifying a presidential candidate to his office August 7, 2024. But the Democratic National Convention, where the nominee is typically chosen, is scheduled for August 19, 2024. To fix the problem, LaRose suggests either Ohio's lawmakers pass an exception to the rule or the Democratic National Committee holds its convention earlier. And Florida's Republican Party is gearing up for the 2024 election with a growing lead in voter registrations. There are now almost 900,000 more registered Republicans than Democrats in the state, as reported by Florida's Voice. Republicans have been steadily increasing their lead, especially since the end of the pandemic. Just in March alone, Democrats lost over 1,000 voters, while Republicans gained over 30,000. Governor Ron DeSantis wrote on X that prior to 2021, Florida never had more registered Republicans than Democrats. Now, a million voter advantage is within reach. And Republican National Committee co-chair Lara Trump said yesterday that election integrity is a top priority in the upcoming November election. She said that the committee will dedicate all of its resources to its election integrity division as needed, speaking on Fox News. People are not sitting on the sidelines anymore. They understand what's at stake. It's a must-win election. And from the election integrity perspective, we're focused on it like a laser at the RNC. Former President Trump raked in a massive $50.5 million in funds for his re-election bid on Saturday, a new record. Laura Trump emphasizes that the fundraising ensures the RNC's ability to train poll workers and lawyers in every voting precinct. RNC Chair Michael Watley says the committee will spend every dollar raised on two core missions, increasing voter turnout and protecting the ballot. Watley says the committee will file a lawsuit if election rules are broken. Coming up, Ukraine funding, a possible Alejandro Mayorkas trial and more. What all is on the agenda for a Congress after they return following a two-week recess? And Boeing under scrutiny again as yet another plane experiences a frightening incident. What went wrong and a new FAA investigation after the break. Water, nature's ultimate cleaner. We drink it, we bathe in it. Think water, think steam, think clean. Now harness the power of water with the H2OX5 5-in-1 steam cleaning system. I'm so impressed with the X5. It's an all-in-one product. I can use it throughout my entire house. It's cleaning, it's sanitizing. There's no chemicals in it. It's just steam. This is unbelievable. There is no more odor. You could spend over $500 to purchase the products that the X5 5-in-1 Miracle replaces. Order your H2O X5 steam cleaning system, a $500 value, for just four easy payments of $43. Order now and we'll upgrade your X5 package. We'll add a sixth of 
load with the dusting and polishing wand. Valued at over $30, this extra bonus attachment makes your H2OX5 the H2OX6. That means your 10-piece system becomes a 12-piece system at no extra cost to you. All for just three easy payments of $43. Call or click right now. Hi, I'm Susan Lucci. You may know me from my many years on television. I never thought about heart disease until I had my own heart event. I felt this slight pressure on my chest, just slight. I thought, oh, it's nothing, it'll go away. I didn't get it. I did not get it. But a few days later, while shopping at a boutique, that pressure returned much stronger. It felt like an elephant pressing on my chest. I had a 90% blockage in my main artery and a 75% blockage in the adjacent artery. I was rushed into surgery where I received two stents in my arteries. Stents developed through research funded by the American Heart Association. Those stents saved my life. That's why I'm in front of you today, asking you to join me in supporting the American Heart Association by becoming a monthly donor. Call now or go to helpheart.org. For only $19 a month, just 63 cents a day, you can help fund the next medical breakthrough. Get the next person trained in CPR, the next hospital certified in high quality cardiovascular care. I'm so grateful to the American Heart Association. Their research helped save my life. I can enjoy life with my children, my grandchildren, and my friends. Heart disease is America's number one killer and your support now can help save your life or the life of someone you love. Give $19 a month with your credit card and we'll send you this special t-shirt that you can wear to show that you are helping save lives. Please, listen to your heart. The only reason I'm here today is because I did. So please call the number on your screen or go to helpheart.org now. Join me as a monthly donor today and help save even more lives. Thank you. Join us on NTD Good Morning because we want you to stay informed. Kickstart your morning with the latest you missed overnight. Right, and don't forget that inspiration. Absolutely, so let's shine some light on the good news too. Tune in every weekday morning to NTD News. Congress returns to Washington this week after a two-week recess, and they have a lot on their agenda. Before the break, they managed to pass a $1.2 trillion funding bill after months of delays, but there are still many important issues left unresolved. One major item on the Senate's plate is the possible impeachment of trial, the trial for the impeachment of Department of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. House members have accused Mayorkas of mishandling issues at the southern border. There's also talk of providing additional support to Ukraine, which has stalled in Congress for months due to ge growing GOP criticism. And with ongoing discussions about funding to rebuild the collapsed Francis Scott Key Bridge in Maryland, Congress has a lot to consider. They'll also be looking at reauthorizing a controversial spying power, Section 702 of the Foreign Intelligence Surveil Surveillance Act. Let's take a closer look at impeachment case against Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. Here's the timeline of what we could see this week. The articles of impeachment will be presented to the Senate on Wednesday. That's when the trial officially begins. House impeachment managers will act as prosecutors against Mayorkas. Senators are scheduled to be sworn in as jurors on Thursday. Mayorkas faces two articles of impeachment. The first article charges him with refusal to comply with the law. The second accuses him of breach of public trust. It's estimated that over 10 million illegal immigrants crossed the border under the Biden administration. The Democrat-controlled Senate is widely expected to dismiss the impeachment trial against Mayorkas. The back and forth between Texas Governor Greg Abbott and New York City Mayor Eric Adams continues. Last week, Adams invited the governor to stay at one of New York's migrant shelters. Adams said that's for Abbott to see what he has created. The governor was on Fox News yesterday responding to Adams' remarks. What Mayor Adams needs to do, uh, he needs to stop talking boldly about uh, illegal immigration and the migrants that Texas is sending there, and he needs, to, he needs to step up and do his own job because look at the dangers in New York City under his watch. Events. Abbott pointed to recent crime events in the Big Apple and the dangers of the city's subway system. 
He also responded to allegations he is using illegal immigrants as political pawns. Abbott says President Biden is the one using Im immigrants as political pawns to appease far-left officials and voters. In the wake of the Baltimore Bridge disaster, a large cargo ship lost power near New York City near the Verrazano Narrows Bridge. The Coast Guard got a report that the ship lost power on Friday as it was moving in a shipping lane called the Kilvan Cole. The Kilvan Cole is a narrow and busy waterway with ships going to and from ports. It connects Staten Island and Bayonne, New Jersey. Tugboats helped the ship until it got power back and anchored near the bridge. The Coast Guard made sure the ship's power system was fixed before letting it continue its journey to South Carolina. Now for a look at the Baltimore Bridge. Yesterday, salvage crews began removing containers from the cargo ship after the crash last month. That's an important step toward the full reopening of one of the nation's main shipping lanes. The removal of the containers from the Dolly cargo ship will continue this week as weather permits. Officials say crews are making progress removing sections of the bridge that lay across the ship's bow. So far, 32 vessels have passed through temporary channels created on either side of the wreckage. Maryland Governor Wes Moore said yesterday the target for making the shipping lane fully operational is the end of May. Some scary moments aboard a Southwest Airlines jet yesterday. A plane that left Denver's International Airport for Houston had to make an emergency landing back in Denver after an engine cover fell off during takeoff. The cover struck part of the plane's wing. FlightAware says the plane returned to safety to Denver about 35 minutes after it took off. No one was hurt. Passengers were put on a different jet and flown to Houston. The Federal Aviation Administration is investigating the incident. The FAA is also looking to several other recent engine issues on Southwest's fleet of Boeing planes. Boeing has come under fire since a door plug panel tore off an Alaska Airlines jet mid-flight back in January. And a member of the San Francisco Board of Supervisors has introduced a bill that would force neighborhood grocery stores to give notice before closing up business. The board initially passed the Neighborhood Grocery Protection Act in 1984, then Mayor Dianne Feinstein vetoed the bill. Supervisor Dean Preston argues the law is necessary to address food insecurity in the city. Preston said the bill was, quote, a good idea in 1984, and it's an even better idea now. Grocery stores would be required to give six months' notice prior to closure and meet with community members. Anyone impacted by a grocery's refusal to adhere to the new rules would be able to pursue legal action. Mark your calendar. Time is closing in for you to file your 2023 taxes. The IRS is sending a strong reminder that meeting your tax deadly deadlines is crucial. This year, you have until April 15th to file your return. If you owe and fail to file by the due date, the IRS will issue a 5% penalty for each month you're late. And if you file an extension by April 15th, you will have until October 15th to file your taxes. You still will be able to send your return to the IRS electronically or by mail. If you're paying taxes quarterly, payments are also due on April 15th, as well as June 17th, September 16th, and January 15th of next year. And if you live in Maine or Massachusetts, the IRS is giving you until April 17th due to, due to Patriots Day and Emancipation Day holidays. Joining us now is NTD business host, Business Matters host, Don Ma, to give us the latest updates from the tech and business world. Don, good to see you. Now, what do you have for us today? Okay, today we're talking all about Trump and Walmart. And what happened with Trump is that uh, shares of Truth Social, uh, Trump's company, um, which is called the Trump Media and Technology Group, uh, it apparently tumbled 12% on Friday. And with that, it sank to its lowest level since the company went public actually a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so let me just give you a bit more on that. Trump Media shares surged to as high as $79 on the day that it began trading. And then since then, the Truth Social owner's share price plunged by around 49% to a closing price of $40 just about on Friday. Uh, but, you know, let's take a step back here and look at the bigger picture. Uh, Trump media shares still spiked 
by more than 130 percent so far this year, despite those recent losses and Trump's personal stake in the company is still valued over $3 billion. Still quite high, in my opinion. Well, that's true. Um, and you mentioned Walmart. Yes. Yeah. So apparently a potential good news here when it comes to Walmart. So what's happening is that some Walmart shoppers uh, could be eligible to actually receive uh, cash payments of up to $500 as part of a $45 million settlement. And this is what the retail giant recently agreed in order to settle a lawsuit, uh, actually. And this uh, class action lawsuit uh, in it, Walmart is accused of three systemic unfair and deceptive business practices and these practices led to customers being charged more than a product's lowest advertised per pound or per ounce price so let me explain here walmart was accused of falsely inflating product weight uh, as well as mislabeling the weight of bagged produce and overcharging for sold by weight clearance products. And this is according to the complaint, by the way. And then shoppers at checkout were allegedly led to believe that they were actually paying lower prices on sold by weight goods like poultry, for example, seafood, another example, and on certain bagged uh, citrus fruits like organic oranges, grapefruit. Uh, but Walmart isn't admitting any uh, wrongdoing, but it reached a settlement in November 2023 agreeing to pay $45 million to customers who bought uh, weighted goods or bagged citrus in the United States and Puerto Rico. Uh, and this is between October 19th, 2018 and January 19th, uh, 2024 of this year. Oh, right. Okay. Well, that's an interesting uh, development there and we'll have to keep watching that. Thank you so much, Don. Yeah. Thank you. Coming up, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said the U.S. will push China to change policies that, that threaten American jobs. More on Yellen's fourth and final day in Beijing. Taiwanese chipmaker TSMC wins a huge U.S. subsidy for microchip production. The new grants come amid Biden's push for chip security. We'll have the details soon when we return. What was the process of actually putting this all together? Many, many hours of finding the right camera angles and watching it. The first trouble started just after one o'clock. 45 pages, here it is right here. Donald Trump has been indicted. Somber day for the country. This all happened before President Trump's speech was over. The founder of the Oath Keepers Militia Group is headed to prison for more than 18 years. His lawyers didn't have this no. video. The, the video we're watching right now his own lawyers did not no. have. There was a big question of what did the people do who actually did enter the building. This is where we picked it up with the security footage that is new. At this point, the, the story dramatically changes. The New Jersey man who assaulted a Capitol police officer on January 6th has been sentenced. So this was withheld. This was not shown to the defense. That could be considered exculpatory evidence. This doesn't seem like what a lot of the media is showing. It's going to change narratives no matter what your political perspective is. What we're after is the truth. We are only 80 years removed from countries that killed 60 to 70 million people intentionally. And we have people being like, oh, it can't happen here. Yeah, it can. And it might. These people, they're not interested in the facts. They're not interested in anything except crushing people that are in their way. There needs to be a formal deprogramming of the cult members. A strong church can stop this. Is deep sea fish oil really healthy? Due to pollution in the oceans, most fish contain heavy metal elements and radioactive substances. That's why it's so important to choose a pure source of omega-3. Puritan green vegetable omega-3 is made from purslane and perilla seeds, which are rich in nutrients and minerals, especially vitamins A, D, E, calcium and iron. With natural processing and no harmful chemical additives, it has more than 90% concentration of omega-3. 
rank is 3, 6, 7, and 9. It effectively improves brain power and is beneficial to the heart's health. Puritang Omega-3 does not smell of fish and contains no pollutants, so both adults and children can safely and easily consume it over a long period of time. Puritang Green Vegetable Omega-3. Greener, healthier, and more effective. Visit puritang.com to learn more. We're in the nation's capital asking the important questions so that you're in the know. Join us daily, Monday through Friday, on the Capitol Report on NTD News. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen wrapped up her China visit with a warning this morning. China is now simply too large for the rest of the world to absorb this enormous capacity. Actions taken by the PRC today can shift world prices. And when the global market is flooded by artificially cheap Chinese products, the viability of American and other foreign firms is put into question. PRC is China's official name, the People's Republic of China. Yellen said Washington won't allow the flood of cheap Chinese imports to decimate new industries. China has been dumping excess products into global markets. The products sell at prices so low that Western counterparts struggle to compete. The Chinese companies can afford it only because they are backed by state subsidies. The situation is a dire one for sectors like solar, electric vehicles and lithium-ion batteries, pillars of the renewable energy industry. China makes over 80% of the world's solar panels. China's solar panels and their makers have virtually wiped out European producers. Yellen said President Biden would not allow a repeat of the China shock of the early 2000s when a flood of Chinese imports destroyed 2 million American manufacturing jobs. Over $11 billion in U.S. grants of loans to boost microchip production here at home. The U.S. Commerce Department announced the award to TSMC today. The Taiwanese company is the world's largest contract chip maker and a major supplier of Apple and NVIDIA. The funding would help TSMC set up a third semiconductor plant in Arizona where it could, would churn out the world's most advanced microchips measured in two nanometers. The award includes over $6 billion in subsidy and up to $5 billion in low-cost government loans. The Commerce Department says TSMC agreed to increase investment in its Arizona plant to $65 billion. Mass production is expected to kick off in 2028. At full capacity, these factories could make tens of millions of chips used in artificial intelligence. The technology is key to country's military capability on the battlefield. The Commerce Department also expects these factories to create over 26,000 jobs. The funding comes from the Chips and Science Act. Intel got over $20 billion in grants and loans from the act last month. And South Korean semiconductor maker Samsung is also expected to get a bite from it soon. Beijing's information war against the U.S. getting more sophisticated with the help of artificial intelligence. Take a look at this clip. It's an AI-generated animation spreading on Facebook and X. Inflation has heavily squeezed workers' incomes, but the rich are still cashing in, and the wealth gap widens. Ever seen a badge crack? Well, that's Uncle Sam's rep these days. This video clip comes from CGTN. It's an overseas arm of Beijing's mouthpiece, China Central Television. CGTN has a U.S. branch and has been pushing anti-American views for some time. But with AI, generating Chinese propaganda has become faster and easier. A Friday report from Microsoft says China has been increasingly using AI-generated content in recent months to sow division in the U.S. What's more, similar Chinese influence operations are also active on U.S. soil. One of them is a Facebook community page called The War of Somethings. It pushes Chinese Communist Party talking points, videos and articles that seek to paint the U.S. as a democracy in crisis. Take this post on the 2024 election, for example. The caption reads, quote, the campaign has turned everyone into a clown. 
Another Chinese influence operation also tried to persuade Americans not to vote in the 2022 midterm elections. Zooming out, the Chinese Communist Party spends big money to sway U.S. public opinion. It has burned over $300 million in this regard since 2016. That's only part of the budget. Beijing spends billions of dollars every year on its global campaign to push propaganda and shape public opinion about the Communist Party. When you look at the pieces of the puzzle and you put it together, you see a breathtaking ambition uh, on the part of the PRC to seek information dominance in key regions of the world. In the U.S., some of these influence efforts can be subtle, like this ad insert published on USA Today. At a glance, it looks like a news article that paints a positive image of Chinese leader Xi Jinping saying Xi's visit to an American school left an indelible mark on students. But look closer. You'll see a small line reading paid advertisement at the top. The ad was paid by China Daily, a Chinese Communist Party mouthpiece. And it's not just USA Today. China put similar ad inserts in some of the most influential American outlets, like Foreign Policy, Time Magazine, and the Los Angeles Times. China Daily also put similar ads in regional newspapers across the U.S., including the Seattle Times, the Houston Chronicle, the Boston Globe, and the Chicago Tribune. Senator Marco Rubio and Chuck Grassley wrote letters to these outlets in March, demanding they stop accepting money from China Daily. A bizarre phenomenon reported inside China. Residents are complaining about their new neighbors, but not for noise complaints or cleanliness. Instead, apartments are getting bought up to use for an unusual kind of memorial, to store cremation urns. Reports of this are popping up across China. Some residents say the behavior severely violates Chinese taboos and is driving them to move away. Why choose a residential apartment over a grave? China experts weighing in. Windows covered with blackout curtains, posters, or even bricked up. Residents are pointing to an unexpected new trend appearing across China. Residential apartments being bought up and turned into so-called memorial houses meaning residential housing bought specifically to transform into a memorial and final resting place for the remains of a loved one. Thursday marked China's Qingming Festival, also known as Tomb Sweeping Day. The festival is a major holiday for Chinese people, serving as a time to remember family members who've passed away. But in recent years, some Chinese residents have started visiting apartments instead of graveyards to mark the holiday. In China, there has always been a traditional custom known as let those who've died rest in peace in the ground. However, due to the bad economy and declining incomes, many people can no longer afford expensive burial plots and the high maintenance fees associated with them. Li is a current affairs commentator. According to Chinese media reports, the trend has become especially common in suburban areas surrounding metropolitan cities in recent years. But the fast-growing group is taking heavy criticism. In one apartment building that appears to have a memorial house inside, multiple neighbors hung red banners from their own balconies, announcing that they've put their properties up for sale and plan to move. In other residential compounds, memorial houses even significantly outnumber living residents. That's as the price of burial plots rises and the cost of residential apartment falls. There's also another factor. Under the Chinese Communist Party, citizens cannot buy land. Instead, they must get permission to use the land from authorities, which expires after a set amount of time. Purchasing a home grants the owner the right to use the land the home is on for 70 years, whereas a burial ground plot is only good for 20 years. The trend basically emerged after 2020. The time frame coincided with the outbreak of the pandemic. So during that time, how many people actually died in mainland China? Did the significant increase in deaths lead to higher cemetery prices? Is there a correlation? I think this is worth questioning. Based on local reports collected by NTD, illness-related deaths are still running high inside China, impacting a wide range of age groups. Getting seen at hospitals requires waiting in line for around seven hours. The local authorities don't allow people to announce deaths publicly. All mourning has to be done at home, and then the remains must be taken to the crematorium. 
Many memorial altars are set up at home. I hear about at least eight cases every day through local chat groups. At the crematorium, there's a waiting list with cremations booked three days in advance. Six of my close friends have passed away. They were all diagnosed with either cerebral or myocardial infarctions. Very frightening. The youngest was around 28 years old, and the oldest was in their 60s. My best friend was around 40 years old. We used to chat together often, but after going to bed one night, the next day, they were gone. The Chinese Communist Party has a history of covering up death tolls and infection numbers, both during the COVID-19 pandemic and beyond. We'll keep you updated as the situation develops. And in more China news, a container ship lost propulsion power while transiting New York Harbor less than two weeks after another cargo vessel smashed into Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge. How is this incident tied to China? Be sure to tune in to China in Focus with Tiffany Meyer at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And coming up, scientists are planning a man-made eclipse of sorts. They hope to use one satellite to cast a shadow on another one. Find out why they're preparing the delicate maneuver. A dog missing in California since last summer is found more than 2,000 miles away from home. The pooch and her owner are reunited. More shortly, here on NTD News Today. More than just beautiful dance. It's a touch of the divine. More than just legends. It's the beautiful culture and wisdom of China before communism. More than just a performance. It's an experience that awakens the soul. Lincoln Center, NJ Pack, State Theater, Purchase, and Stamford. Starting March 28th. Tickets at ZhenYun.com. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Just kids, hungry, homeless, and vulnerable. Abused kids often feel safer on the street. Now, more than ever, that's the most dangerous place of all. Covenant House is rescuing and protecting kids during this COVID-19 crisis. We're providing safe shelter to thousands, but the need is overwhelming, and no child is ever turned away. Please call or go online now with your gift of $19 a month to help a homeless child. You'll provide safe shelter, hot meals, and medical care. Your gift will show our kids they're loved. Homeless kids are afraid and alone with nowhere else to turn. You want to know that there's somewhere you can go that's safe. So the Covenant House did that for us. Please call now. With your gift of $19 a month, we'll send you this soft, comforting blanket to show you're helping our kids. Please don't wait. In our national crisis, your gift is the lifeline a child needs. Please call or go online to safeplacetosleep.org now. Thank you for saving precious lives. Hi, I'm Smokey Bear, and I made an assistant to help you out, because only you can prevent wildfires. Hey, Assistant Smokey Bear, call me Papa Bear, because I'm grilling up dinner. <laughs> do you get it? Yes, good job. So, what should I do with all these coals? Don't just toss them out. Put them in a metal container, because those embers can start a wildfire. I understand. The stakes are high. Ha, 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 ha. See, Smokey thinks I'm funny. Want to know what's really happening around the world? Join us for a deep dive discussion with our expert panel on International Reporters Roundtable.
The European Space Agency is preparing two satellites for launch to help scientists study the Sun. Proba 3 should accomplish something previously thought impossible, casting a precise shadow from one spacecraft to another in a man-made eclipse. The European Space Agency, or ESA, office in Brussels is planning a mission dubbed Proba 3. The aim is to get a continuous view of the Sun's corona, which is the outermost layer of the Sun's atmosphere. Researcher Andrei Zhukov explains what scientists hope to learn. This will help us to understand uh, a number of things, like the origin of the solar wind. There are still some unanswered questions, uh, in particular the ones which concern the slow wind. The slow wind is the one which is variable, the one which is all the time evolving, not homogeneous, not uniform. So there it's still not clear where it comes from. The study of the sun includes learning how certain solar phenomena affect life on Earth. The data from uh, Proba 3 is going to provide key information and new uh, knowledge on um, the, the, uh, the sun's corona and also phenomena like coronal mass ejections as they, they form and they move out into uh, interplanetary space. Um, these are some of the key phenomena that uh, form part of what we call space weather. Uh, and so space weather, coronal mass ejections have the possibility to impact uh, our li life and activities here on Earth. If things go as planned, the satellites will be launched from India in September. If successful, one satellite will cast a shadow onto the other, creating the first ever man-made eclipse. The two satellites will be launched into space together, then at the right time they will split up. So we will send a command and we will actually separate the stack. They will separate and then they will go into a safe orbit pretty far away from each other so that we make sure they don't bump into each other. The two spacecraft will maintain a precise formation down to a few millimeters. One craft will fly closer to the sun, lining up with it to block the blinding light, the same way the moon creates a shadow over the Earth's surface during an eclipse. Once the sun's light is hidden, only the corona remains visible. The other satellite will photograph the inner part of the corona region and study its features. The ESA hopes studying the solar corona will help scientists predict solar weather, like solar storms affecting satellites in orbit, and communication networks and power grids on Earth. And next up, Japan's cherry blossoms are blooming. The flower, known locally as Sakura, is the country's favorite. NTD's Andrew Thomas has the latest on the season. Cherry blossom season is a particularly cherished time of year in Japan. The 2024 bloom came five days later than usual, catching many tourists and the tourism industry off guard. The forecast was uh, several days delayed than last year. Um, so it is very difficult uh, to inform the guests when uh, will be uh, fully bloomed cherry blossoms. Japan's cherry blossom season is renowned all over the world. During this time, the Japanese landscape transforms into a sea of delicate pink and white. Parks and gardens make special preparations for their arrival before millions visit to enjoy the flowers. Cherry blossom season is one of the uh, very uh, well-known uh, season throughout the year. Uh, so, of course, um, a lot of uh, guests from overseas. Many of the tourists in Tokyo's Asakusa district plan their trip based on Sakura season. I suppose with all the festivals and like, you know, events they have around cherry blossoms in Japan, I would definitely say it's, you know, very special. Japan has been experiencing an unprecedented influx of foreign visitors since lifting pandemic era restrictions. Um, I came to Japan uh, in this season mostly for the cherry blossoms, but um, also, because it's colder where I'm from, it's uh, very hot already, so it's nice to come for the weather. This event in Tokyo's Nihonbashi district was planned six months in advance. Nihonbashi was the starting point of the Tokaido route in the Edo period. And since that period, Nihonbashi was a place where many people gathered. With that in mind, we wanted to use cherry blossom season to bring people together. And we also believe this will bring a cheerful atmosphere to the area. For many, the cherry blossom season symbolizes not only the start of spring, but also new beginnings. Andrew Thomas, MTD News. And a field boasting over half a million tulips is now open to visitors in southern England. The burst of colors is a welcome sight as spring begins in the UK. 
Housed at Tully's Farm near Crawley, the field features a wide range of tulips. Visitors can stroll through rows of pink, red, orange, yellow and white spring flowers. Tully's director says the area is an excellent opportunity for photographers or anyone looking to appreciate the landscape. The grass was seeded in preparation in the summer last year, when the tulip bulbs were planted underneath the turf in November. Local media reports that over 100 different varieties are planted in the field. A missing dog has been found nearly 2,000 miles away. The pet went missing in California last summer. Police near Detroit, Michigan spotted her last week. Mishka wandered away from her owner's garage in July and never returned. When police discovered the terrier mix, they contacted an animal welfare group, which quickly discovered that she had an identity chip. Her owner lives in San Diego, but was planning to travel to Minnesota when the call came in. He drove 10 hours to Michigan to reunite with the long-lost dog with his family. And before we head to a break, if you have any feedback, please email us at news.today at ntd.com. And stay with us. We'll have more stories in just a moment. There are real consequences to controlled media. And NTD's founders know them firsthand. Our freedom of thought is the price. This is the lesson that guides us in everything we do. Yeah, so there's the tear gas there. The we know the value of a free society. And we take seriously the responsibility to preserve it. We are NTD. It was spectacular, so beautiful. I thought I was going to heaven. Oh, it was electric. I'm getting chills talking about it. It gets a 10 from me, that's for sure. It was that good. Absolutely marvelous. Hands down, the best show I've ever seen. It's emotional, it's captivating, it's visual. Every single bit of your senses is engaged. Oh my gosh, it was a riot. I didn't expect to laugh so much and also be touched so much. I was literally looking for something which was magical, uplifting, and it was way more than that. The music was just so beautiful and it and it really lit up the room. And there's nothing like live music. The combination of the music and the dancing was sometimes uplifting. You know, my toes are tapping and I want to get out of my seat. But it was also very calming. I think it's magnificent. It's magnificent to see another part of Chinese culture that a lot of people don't get to see. And the stories are amazing. The execution, the dance is amazing. The flips, the aerial movement. It was amazing. It wasn't anything I've ever seen before. Absolutely perfection. I, there wasn't even one flaw. I must say I'm so highly impressed with the level of the dancers, their technique. Just all the concepts are absolutely wonderful. The costumes, they were works of art. The way they used the costumes to create part of the image, it was just absolutely mind-blowing. I thought I was going to come to see some amazing dancing, but I learned so much about the Chinese culture. They're actually telling you the story of their life, of their culture, of their history, and bringing it full circle so that we can see and enjoy it. There was an encouragement to go back to that divine nature and those divine values. This experience for me is transcendent. It was a communication to the soul and the spirit. And I cried, I think, the whole time because it was so amazing. It was powerful and it is something that's needed in today's society. People nowadays go to the doctors, the psychiatrists for pills, for antidepressants. This, this is the antidepressant, the pets. I knew it was gonna be good. It's a billion times better than I even thought it would be. I've heard people say, you don't wanna miss this. And I would fully agree. I'm going to tell everyone to come see it. You have to. Definitely going to come back next year. Totally inspirational. You have to go see this. Everyone needs to see this. Don't miss it. It's a once-in-a-lifetime must-see that will change their lives forever.
Some things are better left to a professional. In hindsight, <laughs> probably shouldn't have tried to remove my own appendix. Like when it comes to finding financial advisors. What was I thinking? <laughs> so leave it to Smart Asset to find them for you. Take the free quiz at smartasset.com. Then you'll be matched with up to three vetted fiduciary financial advisors. To get started, take the advisor match quiz now at smartasset.com. I was this close, this close. What if you could whiten your teeth by simply brushing your teeth? Now you can with Smile Actives, the teeth whitening breakthrough that safely gets your teeth white and keeps them white every day just by brushing your teeth. I never thought that whitening my teeth could be so easy. I just put the gel on the brush, the toothpaste on it, brush, and I can see my white teeth. Simply add Smile Actives to any toothpaste and our patented PolyClean technology activates into a powerful microfoam that penetrates into the enamel surface to safely lift and remove stains. You need a simple way to whiten your teeth without strips, without trays, without going to the dentist. And it was about time that a product was developed that you would be able to do that with just brushing. And now Smile Actives is even better with new Pro Whitening Gel with 33% greater whitening power, clinically shown to whiten teeth faster, up to eight shades. 100% of users saw whiter teeth on food stains, coffee and wine stains, even on veneers, crowns, and dentures. I eat the blueberries, I drink the coffee, and I know that Smile Actives will keep my teeth white every day. If you could use something so easy like Smile Actives to take yellow teeth to white teeth, why wouldn't you? Why spend hundreds of dollars for whitening treatments at the dentist when now you can whiten your teeth with new Smile Actives Pro Whitening Gel every time you brush your teeth? Call or go to smileactives.com and for a limited time, get new Pro Whitening Gel for just $24.95. Order in the next five minutes and buy one, get one absolutely free for just $24.95. That's two for one and save 58%. We'll even include free shipping. Get your teeth whiter guaranteed or return it within 60 days for your money back. I smile every day now. <laughs> The difference is literally night and day. So now I'm always smiling, always choosing, because now my teeth are much whiter. This offer is not available in stores, so call or click now before the special buy one, get one free offer goes away.
Imagine if the sun went dark in the middle of the day. 31 million Americans will experience just that this afternoon. We'll speak to our on-the-ground reporter covering the great American solar eclipse. Former President Trump gives an official abortion statement via social media. Find out what he's advocating for and how it could impact the election. President Biden could face difficulties getting on the Ohio general election ballot. What's causing the hiccup and the possible solutions? And in college basketball, after five rounds of play, we're down to just two teams left. Entity's Dave Martin joins us to preview the championship game. 5,000 years of Chinese history comes to life on stage with Shen Yun Performing Arts. Find out why New York theater goers call the show educational and profound. This is NTD News Today, live from our NTD Global Headquarters. Here are Stephania Cox and Chris Beers. Hi, I'm David Lamb, sitting in for Chris Beers. And to begin the show, the eagerly anticipated total solar eclipse is here. Enthusiasts who traveled to Texas to witness it are concerned, though, about bad weather, which could ruin the astronomical spectacle. We have some updated weather information and other things you should know ahead of today's eclipse. Today's eclipse totality will last up to four and a half minutes, depending on where it's viewed. The totality path is a band about 115 miles wide, where the moon completely blocks the sun. Scientists recommend southern Texas and northern Mexico as the best viewing spots. In Mazlatan, Mexico, astronomers are gathering, hopeful for a clear view despite potential clouds. Even if we have clouds like this, you know, we might miss the outer corona, but with clouds like this, we should still be able to see things like the diamond ring and uh, the inner, perhaps the uh, chromosphere and inner corona. So I am cautiously optimistic. This amateur Belgian astronomer said it took him four years to convince his partner to come to Mexico for this eclipse. When did they fly from direct? Uh, London uh, and Paris, Charles de Gaulle. So we went to Charles de Gaulle, get on the airplane, Mexico City, and then five, six days later, here we are in the totality zone. Only thing that can go wrong is the weather. It's like, it's like is it going to be cloudy or not? Crowds will also descend on locations in Texas. This visitor says it may be his only chance to enjoy such a cosmic event. What the heck, you know, I'm not gonna, the next one is, what, 20 years from now? I don't know if I'm gonna be able to see a, a total solar eclipse in the United States in 20 years. So, figure this is the time. Millions of spectators are expected to show up across North America to view the eclipse. One major concern is today's weather forecast. A large portion of the eclipse viewing area is expected to have cloudy weather, putting a damper on optimum eclipse viewing. Most of the rest of the continent will see a partial eclipse if they aren't located in the path of totality. If you miss it today, there won't be another total solar eclipse spanning the entire U.S. until 2045. And NTD's Chris Beers joins us now from Syracuse, New York. He's in the path of totality where the sun will be completely covered by the moon. Chris, good to see you. Now, talk to us about today's celestial phenomenon. Hey guys, yeah, I'm standing here in front of the Milton J. Rubenstein Museum of Science and Technology in Syracuse, New York, where the entire city is about to be plunged into total darkness for about a minute and 24 seconds, around 3.23 p.m. Eastern Time. We will be joining about 32 million Americans from Texas to Maine, who are also in the path of totality like we are here in Syracuse. Earlier, I spoke with the museum's marketing director, Courtney Armbruster to help break down this celestial phenomenon for us. Let's watch that. Just like you would never look at the sun on any normal day, your regular sunglasses like these will not protect you from looking at the eclipse. You need special solar eclipse viewing glasses just like these to look at the sun safely during the entire part of the eclipse except for totality. So during that very brief one minute period when the sun is completely covered by the moon, we can look up at it safely. Until then, you must wear glasses at all times. 
make sure that the glasses you have are not counterfeit, that they are ISO certified, and that you get them from somewhere that is selling legitimate glasses. Looking at the sun without protective lenses can damage your eyes permanently pretty badly. One way to tell that your glasses are working properly is if you look through them, you shouldn't be able to see anything unless you're looking at the sun or a light bulb right ahead of you. And it should just be a pin light that you can just kind of see. If you can see through them, they are not doing the right job. Now Syracuse is kind of on the edge of totality. Some of the cities that are right on the path during the center are expecting hundreds of thousands of people to come from across New York State, across the country. Here in Syracuse we're expecting large crowds to come downtown, to come to other festivals that we're having in the area. We're just pretty excited about people coming to see not only the amazing eclipse, but Syracuse and the wonderful things that Central New York has to offer. Okay, this is a, a cave astrola. In the 70s, it was uh, the premier amateur telescope. This is a six inch student model, a small one. And uh, I have converted it into a solar scope so I can do a projection of the sun and I can see transits and eclipse and things like that. But just a couple minutes of uh, doing stuff, I can mount a camera here and use it to take pictures. It has a motor drive. But a motor drive really doesn't work for this event because I'm creating so much heat, I have to change filters every couple of minutes because it builds up a lot of heat quick. And guys, the gentleman we spoke to there was saying that his device uh, can create such powerful, uh, intense sun rays um, through its magnification properties that it can actually severely damage people. He even said that it could kill people, though he said he never tested it. Uh, make sure that you uh, tune in at 3.23 p.m. Eastern on NTD Newsroom. I will be there experiencing the total eclipse. Uh, here in Syracuse, New York, the city will be completely dark for about a minute. And if you're not in the path of totality like we are, you can sort of live vicariously through me uh, experiencing the total eclipse here. Back to you guys in New York. Yes, I look forward to that, and I will see you there too, Chris. How is traffic getting to where you are? I hear it was pretty bad getting up to upstate New York. You know, we left at about 5 p.m. yesterday or 6 p.m., so we had no traffic. It was a beautiful drive, nice clear skies. Um, it is filling in here right now, but we're technically on the outside of the path of totality, the edge of it. Um, so our, we're going to see about um, a minute of darkness. Other places will see three or four minutes, and those areas are getting hundreds of thousands of people they're expecting. Governor Kathy Hochul said that uh, New York State is expecting over one million people to view the eclipse from out of state. Wow, Chris. Now, what about the crowd? What are, what are people saying? I mean, do you see them with tons of glasses? I know Courtney from the museum talked about them. Yeah, you know, right now it's just a regular day. There's not even the dimming of the light that happens prior to the total eclipse during the partial eclipse. It's just a normal day, so people aren't wearing their glasses yet. If they were, they'd be running into the things because they are completely dark. I don't know if you've tried these on, but when you put them on, it's like it's like you're staring in a completely dark closet. The only thing you can see clearly is the sun, which looks sort of like a dim red orb. We do have a pair here. David's prepared, so uh, we'll be experiencing that later, but I will see you later. Thank you so much, Chris. All right, with the day of the total solar eclipse upon us, a Chicago health organization, Prevent Blindness, is urging people to be careful. The organization also shared with Fox News some misunderstandings about eclipse viewing. The organization is breaking down three eclipse viewing myths. Myth one, that it's okay to look at the sun for just a minute or two. Doing that is dangerous and can hurt your eyes. Even during a total solar eclipse, it's risky without proper protection. Myth two, it's safe to look at the eclipse through your smartphone using your smartphone to watch the eclipse. Can be harmful too, actually. So as you might accidentally look at the sun while taking photos, looking through a camera's viewfinder is also unsafe. And myth three, eclipses emit harmful rays that can cause blindness while it's never safe to stare at the sun. Eclipses themselves don't emit harmful rays that can cause blindness. With proper eye protection and caution, you can safely enjoy the event. The eclipse could also be dangerous for drivers, though. Researchers say fatal crashes went up during past eclipses with more cars on the road. In 2017, there was a 31% increase in deadly accidents around the eclipse time, 
according to a study published in the Yama Internal Medicine Journal. The accidents didn't happen during the eclipse hour when it gets dark. The peak danger times are before and after when people are driving to and from their viewing spots. Experts are worried about the traffic after the event, especially the drive home. The University of Michigan estimates that about 20 million people in the U.S. journeyed to different cities during the 2017 eclipse. And up ahead, Dwayne The Rock Johnson endorsed President Biden in the 2020 election, but the pro wrestler and movie star says he won't do the same this year. Find out why. And the impeachment trial of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas is set to start this week. We have the timeline. More in just a moment, here on NTD News Today. One in five children worldwide are faced with the reality of living without food. No family dinners, no special treats, not enough energy to play. All around the world, hunger is affecting children's physical and mental health. Toddlers are suffering from acute malnutrition, which stunts their growth. Kids are forced to drop out of school so they can help support their families. Conflict, inflation, and climate have ignited the worst famine in our lifetime. And we are fed up. Fed up that hunger devours dreams. Fed up that hunger destroys joy. Fed up with the fact that hunger eats childhood. Help us feed the futures of children all over the world by visiting GetFedUpNow.org. For as little as $10 a month, you can join Save the Children as we support children and families in desperate need of our help. Now is the time to get fed up and give back. When you join the cause, your $10 monthly donation can help communities in need of life-saving treatments and nutrients prevent children from dropping out of school. Support our work with communities and governments to help children go from short-term surviving to long-term thriving. And now, thanks to special government grants, every dollar you give can multiply up to 10 times the impact. That means more food, water, medicine, and help for kids around the world. You'll also receive a free tote bag to share your support for children in need. Having your childhood eaten away by hunger is unimaginable. Get fed up. Call us now or visit getfedupnow.org. Shen Yun Creations, the streaming platform from Shen Yun, featuring world-class dance, past programs, and all original music. Masterclasses behind the scenes, comedy, and more. Explore ShenYunCreations.com. The 2024 NTD Night International Chinese Vocal Competition is scheduled to take place at Merkin Hall Kaufman Music Center in New York from September 18th to 21st. The competition specially invites vocalists from the world famous ShenYun Performing Arts to serve as judges. The prestigious gold award is $10,000. Chinese vocal artists aged 18 to 50 are welcome to register. We're in the nation's capital asking the important questions so that you're in the know. Join us daily, Monday through Friday, on the Capitol Report on NTD News. We open with some breaking news. Actor Jonathan Majors was sentenced for the assault and harassment of his former girlfriend, Grace Jabari. A New York criminal judge sentenced Majors to a 52-week mandatory in-person domestic violence prevention program, but didn't give him jail time. The actor will have to give DNA as it's his first conviction and, a pay, and pay a separate $250 surcharge. Majors was a rising star who has appeared in Disney's Marvel franchise and Creed 3. He was convicted in December of one count of reckless assault in the third degree and a non-criminal charge of harassment as a violation. 
The judge said the probation report indicated jail is not necessary, but Majors could face jail time if he violates the rules of his sentencing. And former President Trump is saying he believes abortion laws should be determined by individual states. He posted a social media video explaining his stance this morning. The states will determine by vote or legislation or perhaps both. And whatever they decide must be the law of the land. In this case, the law of the state. Many states will be different. Many will have a different number of weeks. The Republican presidential candidate said he supported exceptions for rape, incest, and to protect the life of the mother. He also reiterated that he supports the availability of in vitro fertilization. Trump applauded the 2022 Supreme Court decision overturning Roe v. Wade, praising his conservative picks to the court. Now he's signaling he wants to leave the decision in the hands of the states, a move likely to earn support among swing state voters rather than with his base. Dwayne The Rock Johnson says he has no plans on endorsing President Biden or anyone else this election year. He said he is concerned with the state of America right now. The endorsement that I made uh, years ago with Biden was one I thought was the best decision for me at that time. Am I going to do that again this year? That answer is no. I'm not going to do that because what I realized what that caused back then was something that tears me up in my guts back then and now, which is division. And I wouldn't do that because my goal is to bring our country together. I'm, I believe in that in my DNA. Johnson is set to headline one of two nights of the annual WrestleMania event this weekend in Philadelphia. Speaking ahead of this event, Johnson said that he believes the American people will make the right decision in November. In 2021, the Fast and Furious star said that he would run for U.S. president if he felt he had enough support from Americans. But in this interview with Fox, he rejects any intention of running. Could a technicality keep President Biden off the general election ballot in Ohio? The problem is the timing of the Democratic National Committee's selection process for presidential candidates and a deadline set by the Ohio Secretary of State's office for certifying the nominee. Ohio Secretary of State Frank LaRose raised this issue in a letter to Ohio Democratic Chair Liz Walters. LaRose pointed out the deadline for certifying a presidential candidate to his office is August 7, 2024. But the Democratic National Convention, where the nominee, nominee is typically chosen, is scheduled for August 19, 2024. To fix the problem, LaRose suggests either Ohio's lawmakers pass an exception to the rule or the Democratic National Committee holds its convention earlier. And next, Florida's Republican Party is gearing up for the 2024 election with a growing lead in voter registrations. There are now almost 900,000 more registered Republicans than Democrats in the state, as reported by Florida's Voice. Republicans have been steadily increasing their lead, especially since the end of the pandemic. Just in March alone, Democrats lost over 1,000 voters, while Republicans gained over 30,000. Governor Ron DeSantis wrote on X that prior to 2021, Florida never had more registered Republicans than Democrats. Now, a million voter advantage is within reach. And Republican National Committee co-chair Laura Trump said yesterday that election integrity is a top priority in the upcoming November election. She said that the committee will dedicate all of its resources to its election integrity division as needed, speaking on Fox News. People are not sitting on the sidelines anymore. They understand what's at stake. It's a must-win election. And from the election integrity perspective, we're focused on it like a laser at the RNC. Former President Trump raked in a massive $50.5 million in funds for his re-election bid on Saturday, a new record. Laura Trump emphasizes that the fundraising ensures the RNC's ability to train poll workers and lawyers in every voting precinct. RNC Chair Michael Watley says the committee will spend every dollar raised on two core missions, increasing voter turnout and protecting the ballot. Watley says the committee will file lawsuits if election rules are broken. And Congress returns to Washington this week after a two-week recess, and they have a lot on their agenda. Before the break, they managed to pass a $1.2 trillion funding bill after months of delays, but there are still many important issues left unresolved. One major item on the Senate's plate is the possible impeachment trial of Department of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. 
House members have accused Mayorkas of mishandling issues at the southern border. There's also talks of providing additional support to Ukraine, which has stalled in Congress for months due to growing GOP criticism. And with ongoing discussions about funding to rebuild the collapsed Francis Scott Key Bridge in Maryland, Congress has a lot to consider. They'll also be looking at reauthorizing a controversial spying power, Section 702 of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. Let's take a closer look at impeachment case against Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. Here's the timeline of what we could see this week. The articles of impeachment will be presented to the Senate on Wednesday. That's when the trial officially begins. House impeachment managers will act as prosecutors against Mayorkas. Senators are scheduled to be sworn in as jurors on Thursday. Mayorkas faces two articles of impeachment. The first article charges him with refusal to comply with the law. The second accuses him of breach of public trust. It's estimated that over 10 million illegal immigrants crossed the border under the Biden administration. The Democrat-controlled Senate is widely expected to dismiss the impeachment trial against Mayorkas. And the Supreme Court will be hearing a case involving homelessness. A group of Democrat lawmakers is urging the court to uphold a ban on prosecuting homeless people for sleeping outside. A federal circuit court ruled earlier that the city of Grants Pass, Oregon, can't enforce its laws punishing homeless people for camping on public lands. The court found that this violated the law against cruel and unusual punishment. In a brief filed last week, 16 Democratic House members and three senators urged the Supreme Court to uphold this decision. They said, quote, punishing poverty traps people in cycles of debt, unemployment, and hopelessness, increasing the likelihood someone will become chronically homeless. The high court will hear oral arguments in this case on April 22nd. In the wake of the Baltimore Bridge disaster, a large cargo ship lost power near New York City near the Verrazano Narrows Bridge. The Coast Guard got a report that the ship lost power on Friday as it was moving in a shipping lane called the Kilvon Cole. The Kilvon Cole is a narrow and busy waterway with ships going to and from ports. It connects Staten Island and Bayonne, New Jersey. Tugboats helped the ship until it got power back and anchored near the bridge. The Coast Guard made sure the ship's power system was fixed before letting it continue its journey to South Carolina. Now for a look at the Baltimore Bridge, Yesterday's salvage crews began removing containers from the cargo ship after the crash last month. That's an important step toward the full reopening of one of the nation's main shipping lanes. The removal of the containers from the Dolly cargo ship will continue this week as weather permits. Officials say crews are making progress, removing sections of the bridge that lay across the ship's bow. So far, 32 vessels have passed through temporary channels created on either side of the wreckage. Maryland Governor Wes Moore said yesterday the target for making the shipping lane fully operational is the end of May. Some scary moments aboard a Southwest Airlines jet yesterday. A plane that left Denver's International Airport for Houston had to make an emergency landing back in Denver after an engine cover fell off during takeoff. The cover struck part of the plane's wing. FlightAware says the plane returned to safety to Denver about 35 minutes after it took off. No one was hurt. Passengers were put on a different jet and flown to Houston. The Federal Aviation Administration is investigating the incident. The FAA is also looking into several other recent engine issues on Southwest's fleet of Boeing planes. Boeing has come under fire since a door plug fell, panel fell off an Alaska Airlines jet mid-flight back in January. And a member of the San Francisco Board of Supervisors has introduced a bill that would force neighborhood grocery stores to give notice before closing up business. The board initially passed the Neighborhood Grocery Protection Act in 1984. Then Mayor Dianne Feinstein vetoed the bill. Supervisor Dean Preston argues the law is necessary to address food insecurity in the city. Preston said the bill was, quote, a good idea in 1984, and it's an even better idea now. Grocery stores would be required to give six months notice prior to closure and meet with community members. Anyone impacted by a grocery's refusal to adhere to the new rules would be able to pursue legal action. New York's Child Protection Services system is accused of system-wide failures in recklessly endangering children's safety. A special grand jury released a report following an investigation into the murder of an eight-year-old boy by his father in 2019.
Before his murder, a family court judge awarded full custody of the little boy to his father despite the warnings from his mother. The mother, in this case, didn't have any history of abuse or violence. The reports say CPS workers went along with it despite knowing that there were serious child abuse allegations against the father. The report also faulted a lack of independent checks and balances in the system and criticized that workers and judges are immune from dereliction of duty. And mark your calendar. Time is closing in for you to file your 2023 taxes. The IRS is sending a strong reminder that meeting your tax deadlines is crucial. This year, you have until April 15th to file your return. If you owe and fail to file by the due date, the IRS will issue a 5% penalty for each month you're late. And if you file an extension by April 15th, you will have until October 15th to file your taxes. You'll still be able to send your return to the IRS electronically or by mail. If you're paying taxes quarterly, payments are also due on April 15th, as well as June 17th, September 16th, and January 15th of next year. If you live in Maine or Massachusetts, the IRS is giving you until April 17th due to Patriots Day and Emancipation Day holidays. China. Coming up, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen says the U.S. will push China to change policies that threaten American jobs. More on Yellen's fourth and final day in Beijing. An ex-Massachusetts city councilor appears to be seen in a video at a Russian military recruitment center. He fled the U.S. earlier this year, before he was set to appear in court. We'll have the details soon when we return. When I started my pillow, it was just a problem solution, one product company. Well, since then, with the help of my dedicated employees, we now have hundreds of products, some you might not even know about. To get the word out, we're having a $25 extravaganza. Two pack multi use my pillows, $25. My pillow sandals, $25. And for the first time ever, our six pack towel sets, you guessed it, just $25. Our brand new four pack dish towels, $25. And I've never done this before. Premium my pillows with all new Giza fabric, any size, any loft level, even king size for only $25. And there's so much more. So go to mypillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code for our $25 extravaganza. Order $75 and over, your entire order ships absolutely free. Hillsdale College is reaching and teaching millions of Americans to pursue truth and defend liberty. But to do that in an even bigger way, we need your help. Your generous support helps educate students from kindergarten to college, all while refusing every penny of government funding, even indirect funding like student loans or grants. And your dedicated giving allows us to teach millions of Americans through our free online courses. You make all the difference. Give a gift today. Just use this link. What was the process of actually putting this all together? Many, many hours of finding the right camera angles and watching it. The first trouble started just after one o'clock. 45 pages, here it is right here. Donald Trump has been indicted. Somber day for the country. This all happened before President Trump's speech was over. The founder of the Oath Keepers Militia Group is headed to prison for more than 18 years. His lawyers didn't have this no. video. The, the video we're watching right now his own lawyers did not no. have. There was a big question of what did the people do who actually did enter the building. This is where we picked it up with the security footage that is new. At this point, the, the story dramatically changes. The New Jersey man who assaulted a Capitol police officer on January 6th has been sentenced. So this was withheld. This was not shown to the defense. That could be considered exculpatory evidence. This doesn't seem like what a lot of the media is showing. It's going to change narratives no matter what your political perspective is. What we're after is the truth. Hi, I'm Kelly Wright. We thank you for joining us and watching America's Hope here on NTD News. 
Bottom line is, I know you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, but let's give you some good news in the midst of the bad news. Watch us nightly right here on MTD News for a full dose of America's hope. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen wrapped up her China visit with a warning this morning. China is now simply too large for the rest of the world to absorb this enormous capacity. Actions taken by the PRC today can shift world prices. And when the global market is flooded by artificially cheap Chinese products, the viability of American and other foreign firms is put into question. PRC stands for the People's Republic of China. Yellen said Washington won't allow the flood of cheap Chinese imports to decimate new industries. China has been dumping excess products into global markets. The products sell at prices so low that Western counterparts struggle to compete. The Chinese companies can afford it only because they are backed by state subsidies. The situation is a dire one for sectors like solar, electric vehicles and lithium-ion batteries, pillars of the new renewable energy industry. China makes over 80 percent of the world's solar panels. Chinese solar panel makers have virtually wiped out European producers. Yellen said President Biden would not allow a repeat of the China shock of the early 2000s when a flood of Chinese imports destroyed 2 million American manufacturing jobs. And over $11 billion in U.S. grants and loans to boost microchip production here at home. The U.S. Commerce Department announced the award to TSMC today. The Taiwanese company is the world's largest contract chip maker and a major supplier of Apple and NVIDIA. The funding would help TSMC set up a third semiconductor plant in Arizona where it would churn out the world's most advanced microchips measured in two nanometers. The award includes over $6 billion in subsidy and up to $5 billion in low-cost government loans. The Commerce Department says TSMC agreed to increase investment in its Arizona plants to $65 billion. Mass production is expected to kick off in 2028. At full capacity, these factories could make tens of millions of chips used in artificial intelligence. The technology is key to countries' military capability on the battlefield. The Commerce Department also expects these factories to create over 26,000 jobs. The funding comes from the Chips and Science Act. Intel got over $20 billion in grants and loans from the act last month. And South Korean semiconductor maker Samsung is also expected to get a bite from it soon. Authorities in Taiwan have raised the death toll in its massive earthquake to 13. Three bodies were found on a walking trail in the rugged mountainous region in the past 24 hours. Rescue teams in Taiwan are gradually reaching some of the 400 people still stranded in remote areas cut off by damaged roads and, and landslides. Bad weather has hampered some of the rescue efforts. Dozens of buildings in Hualien County are damaged, and officials say some will need to be demolished in the coming weeks. Officials say the 7.4 magnitude quake was the strongest to hit Taiwan in a quarter century. And in more China news, a container ship lost propulsion power while transiting New York Harbor less than two weeks after another cargo vessel smashed into Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge. How is this incident tied to China? Be sure to tune in to China in Focus with Tiffany Meyer at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. U.S. Ambassador to Japan Rahm Emanuel has indicated Japan may join the AUKUS alliance this comes as Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida makes an official trip to the U.S. I feel that the importance of the U.S.-Japan alliance is growing even greater as the international community faces complex and diverse challenges and as the security environment surrounding Japan becomes increasingly severe. Kishida left Japan on a flight to Washington, D.C. earlier today and will hold a summit with President Biden this week. He says the trip is an important opportunity to showcase their partnership to the world. In a piece recently published in the Wall Street Journal, Emmanuel said Japan is about to become the first additional Pillar 2 partner of AUKUS. AUKUS is an alliance between the U.S., U.K. and Australia. It's aimed at countering the Chinese regime in the Indo-Pacific.
Emmanuel didn't say when the official announcement would happen, but said Kishida's meeting with Biden will mark a profound transformation in U.S.-Japan relations. And a former Massachusetts city councilor was seen in a video that appears to show him at a Russian military enlistment center. He fled the U.S. earlier this year before a court date on child pornography charges. He's also a former Massachusetts National Guardsman. Wilmer Pueyo Moda served on the Holyoke City Council. He was set to appear in court after police found explicit photos of an underage girl on his phone in 2020. Authorities said the girl was 17. Pueyo Moda said he thought the girl was 22. His court date was scheduled for January this year. Pueyo Moda also reportedly said in an interview with Russian TV that he wanted to be a Russian citizen. Another video appears to show him fighting for Moscow in February when Russian forces took the Ukrainian town of Avdivka. And now we have some short headlines from Germany and other European countries. The UN's nuclear watchdog says a drone attack damaged the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant in Ukraine. The agency says the drone attack on Sunday killed one person in three direct hits against the Russia-controlled facility. The nuclear watchdog said damage to one of the facility's six main reactors has not compromised nuclear safety. It called the strike a violation of basic principles for protecting Europe's largest plant. The agency's director general warned of an increased risk of a major nuclear accident. He called for an immediate cease to reckless attacks. Russian authorities accused Ukraine of using exploding drones in a series of attacks on the plant. Ukraine denied any involvement. And Russia declaring a federal emergency. Thousands of people had to evacuate due to heavy floods in the Orenburg region, which is close to Kazakhstan. Over 6,000 homes were flooded. The floods caused a dam to break on Friday. Officials are now investigating suspected construction violations. Local authorities said the dam could withstand water levels up to around 18 feet. On Saturday morning, the water level was over 30 feet high. Floodwaters have inundated multiple Russian provinces and neighboring parts of Kazakhstan in recent days. The president of Kazakhstan said the flooding may be the country's largest natural disaster in 80 years. And Nicaragua wants the International Court of Justice to stop Germany from exporting weapons to Israel. The court already ruled that it's plausible Israel violated some rights guaranteed under, under the 1948 Genocide Convention. Nicaragua now argues that Germany is violating the convention by continuing to supply Israel with arms. Israel has denied allegations of genocide and said it has the right to defend itself. German officials argue the court case is not justified, saying they didn't violate the convention. And Germany today sending off the first 20 soldiers on a permanent deployment to Lithuania. The two countries agreed to station a German brigade in the Baltic state late last year. Officials said it's a historic moment. Germany's defense minister today said that it's the first time Germany is permanently stationing such a unit abroad. He called it an important day for NATO and its defense capability. The goal is to deploy almost 5,000 troops and around 200 civilians by 2027. Slovakia is set for a new president. Peter Pellegrini won the country's election over the weekend. Pellegrini's win solidifies the influence of the current Prime Minister Robert Fico. The president-elect says he supports the Prime Minister and the government's agenda. Fico began his fourth term last October. He shifted Slovakia's foreign policy towards pro-Russian positions. Fico's coalition also halted Slovakia's armed shipments to Ukraine. Coming up in college basketball, after two weeks of play, March Madness is down to two teams left. NTD's Dave Martin joins us to preview the championship game. A field in southern England boasts more than half a million tulips. Visitors and photographers find themselves in a sea of colors. We'll take you there, here on NTD News Today. I have never seen a production any better than this, anywhere. Breathtaking. It is absolutely stunning. I feel better about the world. I feel uplifted. Invigorating. It was encouraging gave me hope. This has just been therapy for the soul. It's a must-see, must-see. Make sure you see it. 
make sure you see it. Coming to Lincoln Center, NJ Pack, State Theater, Purchase, and Stamford. Shenyun.com. I didn't ask to lose my mother or to be abused at five years old. I didn't ask to be kicked out of my house with nowhere to go. Just can't. I didn't ask for any of this. But I did ask for help, and Covenant House was there. Thanks to their love and support, and to generous people like you, I got what I needed to take control of my life. For the young people who didn't ask to be put in unthinkable situations, Covenant House is there providing safety, hope, and a brighter future. Call or go online now for a gift of only $19 a month, just 63 cents a day. You can provide hot meals, safe shelter, medical care, and love to more than 2,000 young people who sleep at a Covenant house every night. One in 10 young adults will experience homelessness this year. Your gift can help reach them when they need it most. I didn't ask for my parents and my family to disown me. I didn't ask to end up in a homeless shelter. The beauty of it all is, is that I found Covenant House. The need is overwhelming, but your monthly support will make sure no young person is ever turned away. Call or go online right now to safeplacetosleep.org with your gift of just $19 a month. With your monthly donation, you'll receive this soft, comforting blanket as a reminder of the warmth and safety your gift will provide a young person tonight. Covenant House really helped me and really helped mold me into the woman I am today. If there's no help, Covenant House, where would I be today? Your monthly gift is urgently needed to reach young people in communities like yours who didn't ask to be put in unthinkable situations. Show them they're loved and not alone. Call the number on your screen or go online to safeplacetosleep.org. These are all farmers. Maybe no, not this not one. A farm anymore. But here is a farm, right? No, there's also not a farm anymore. All these people shut down because of the government policies? Yeah. The government wants to control the food. So we don't eat meat, but we eat insects. As the price of staples goes through the roof, people will say, I can't afford a steak anymore. So, all right, I'll, just, I'll eat your stupid crickets. For the day's top headlines and the news you need to know, tune in right here to NTD Evening News. A classical, a classical Chinese dance performance bringing joy to audiences in New York City. The New York-based Shen Yun Performing Arts took the stage at the Lincoln Center over the weekend, bringing China's 5,000 years of culture alive on stage. Find out why theatergoers say it touched their hearts. Shen Yun Performing Arts brought China's 5,000 years of culture alive at the David H. Koch Theater at New York City's Lincoln Center on Sunday, April 7th. Audience members said they were moved by the values rooted in those traditions. It was very profound and very, um, I mean, on all levels, the costume, the, the set design, the music, the, the dance itself, like all the aspects were really, really, really enjoyable. I thought it was ex excellent and educational. The digital transition from the stage to that screen in the back was, was really uh, an excellent added attraction and, and, and angle and development. I like how they brought religion and spirituality uh, into so many little vignettes. Yeah, that, that has touched me. Ancient Chinese people believed their culture and values were inspired by the divine. Theater goers said they felt a deep message from Shen Yun's performance. It's something that we all have to bring back into our life for the way the world is right now. We need to bring peace and respect. The circle of kindness come around when someone did something nice and then it came back to them. It, it was really a good message for the children especially. Audience members applauded Shen Yun's efforts to revive an art form that was once almost lost under modern-day China's communist rule. This cultural show uh, was beautiful, was meaningful, was understandable. And what I really liked about it, it, it tells a universal story uh, and for everybody to appreciate it. Uh, and, the, and the stories in this show are woven into the cultures of the whole world. 
and it draws us closer. The education and, and that spirituality, like it's, 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 you know, it's part of the story and, and, you know, it comes across very, very nicely and definitely enlightens uh, people. Come see it. Uh, it, it is eye-opening. Um, it's it's um, refreshing spirituality-wise, but it's also refreshing to see the amount of artistry um, from the costumes to the, the beautiful music um, and how they're depicting different things. Xin Yun is performing at the David H. Koch Theater at Lincoln Center in New York City through April 14th. NTD News, New York. And now for your sports news, we're joined by NTD's Dave Martin. Dave, thanks for joining us. So exciting weekend for college hoops. Now uh, let's start with the women's team. So South Carolina beat Iowa and Caitlin Clark for the title. How did that happen? You know, South Carolina really ruled the second half, especially with their defense. You know, Caitlin Clark actually had 18 points in the first quarter, but by halftime, South Carolina had overtaken them. They had a two-point lead. Then in the second half, they really shut down Clark. She only had nine points after halftime. Meanwhile, I also thought Iowa missed some shots they normally make around the rim. I was also surprised when the game started getting away from them. Their coach didn't call any timeouts to try to regroup them because they started rushing their shots towards the end. But South Carolina, they were really tough on defense, and they're really too deep. Now, they finished the season 38-0. That's the first time a team's been undefeated since 2016. So it was quite a season they had. Now, Dave, the men's championship game is tonight with UConn taking on Purdue. Despite these two both being top seeds, UConn is still favored to win. How do you see it going forward? Yeah, I tend to, I, I definitely agree with the odds makers. I think they're seven and a half point favorites I saw on ESPN bet. That seems about right. I mean, they have really done well in this tournament. Their closest game was Saturday when they beat, they only beat Alabama by 14 points. Uh, actually, that game was actually closer than the score uh, indicated, though. You know, I really think they're too fast for, for Purdue as well. The Boilermakers, they beat NC State Saturday, but it was an ugly game, you know, 63 to 50. Now, Purdue, of course, has the two-time player of the year in Zach Eady. He's 7 foot 4, he weighs 300 pounds. But UConn, they've got a really good center themselves. Uh, Donovan Klingon, he's 7 foot 2, 280. He's a lot more agile. I mean, he you would not think he weighs that much when you watch him play because he can really move. Uh, if Purdue can slow down the pace and maybe get Klingon into some foul trouble, I think they, they have a good chance then because I don't know who UConn has to guard Eady if it's not Klingon. Uh, but that's going to be very tough to do, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, Dave, there's also reports of a, major, of a major coaching move about to take place. What's the latest on that? Yeah, multiple outlets, including ESPN, are reporting that John Calipari is in talks with Arkansas to take that job. Now, he's at Kentucky right now. He's had a very successful run. And Kentucky is one of those few blue blood programs like Kansas, UCLA, North Carolina. It's one of the best out there. A job everyone wants, really. But Calipari, you know, after winning a title, the last few years they've struggled in the, in the NCAA tournament, so much so that their athletic director actually had to put out a statement this season saying Calipari would return. Um, anyway, so they really have high expectations there. I, I guess Calipari was probably feeling the heat from the fan base. Because Arkansas, they're, they're a good team, but this is kind of a step down anyway from Kentucky. Um, now this move opens up a very coveted, coveted job in Kentucky though, so it's interesting to see you know, who the Wildcats choose for their next head coach. Yeah, all right, Dave, thanks for keeping us updated on the court. We appreciate it, as always. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Dave. Japan's cherry blossoms are blooming. The flower, known locally as Sakura, is the country's favorite. Entity's Andrew Thomas has the latest on the season. Cherry blossom season is a particularly cherished time of year in Japan. The 2024 bloom came five days later than usual, catching many tourists and the tourism industry off guard. The forecast was... Uh several days delayed than last year. Um, so it is very difficult uh, to inform the guests when uh, will be uh, fully bloom cherry blossoms. Japan's cherry blossom season is renowned all over the world. During this time, the Japanese landscape transforms into a sea of delicate pink and white. Parks and gardens make special preparations for their arrival before millions visit to enjoy the flowers. Cherry blossom season is one of the uh, very uh, well-known uh, season throughout the year. Uh, so, of course, um, a lot of uh, guests from overseas. 
Many of the tourists in Tokyo's Asakusa district plan their trip based on Sakura season. Especially with all the festivals and like, you know, events they have around cherry blossoms in Japan, I would definitely say it's, you know, very special. Japan has been experiencing an unprecedented influx of foreign visitors since lifting pandemic era restrictions. Um, I came to Japan uh, in this season mostly for the cherry blossoms, but um, also because it's colder where I'm from, it's uh, very hot already, so it's nice to come for the weather. This event in Tokyo's Nihonbashi district was planned six months in advance. Nihonbashi was the starting point of the Tokaido route in the Edo period. And since that period, Nihonbashi was a place where many people gathered. With that in mind, we wanted to use cherry blossom season to bring people together. And we also believe this will bring a cheerful atmosphere to the area. For many, the cherry blossom season symbolizes not only the start of spring, but also new beginnings. Andrew Thomas, NTD News. And in more floral news, a field boasting over half a million tulips is now open to visitors in southern England. So if you're there, be sure to check it out. The burst of colors is a welcome sight, I'm sure, as spring begins in the UK. Housed at Tully's Farm near Crawley, the field features a wide range of tulips. Visitors can stroll through rows of pink, orange, red, yellow and white spring flowers. Tully's director says the area is an excellent opportunity for photographers or anyone looking to appreciate the landscape. The grass was seeded in preparation in the summer last year. Then the bulbs were planted underneath the turf in November. Local media reports that over 100 different varieties are planted in the field. A missing dog has been found nearly 2,000 miles away. The pet went missing in California last summer. Police near Detroit, Michigan spotted her last week. Mishka wandered away from her owner's garage in July and never returned. When police discovered the terrier mix, they contacted an animal welfare group, which quickly discovered that she had an identity chip. Her owner lives in San Diego, but was planning to travel to Minnesota when the call came in. He drove 10 hours to Michigan to reunite with a long-lost dog with his family. Well, that's very sweet. For Round the Clock original news coverage, visit us at ntd.com or download our NTD app. And be sure to stick around for NTD Newsroom at 3 p.m. Eastern. We'll, co we'll cover more stories from the U.S. and around the world. It was spectacular, so beautiful. I thought I was going to heaven. Oh, it was electric. I'm getting chills talking about it. It gets a 10 from me, that's for sure. It was that good. Absolutely marvelous. Hands down, the best show I've ever seen. It's emotional, it's captivating, it's visual. Every single bit of your senses is engaged. Oh my gosh, it was a riot. I didn't expect to laugh so much and also be touched so much. I was literally looking for something which was magical, uplifting, and it was way more than that. The music was just so beautiful in it, and it really lit up the room. And there's nothing like live music. The combination of the music and the dancing was sometimes uplifting. You know, my toes are tapping and I want to get out of my seat, but it was also very calming. I think it's magnificent. It's magnificent to see another part of Chinese culture that a lot of people don't get to see, and the stories are amazing, the execution, the dance is amazing. The flips, the aerial movement, it was amazing. It wasn't anything I've ever seen before. Absolutely perfection. I, there wasn't even one flaw. I must say I'm so highly impressed with the level of the dancers, their technique. Just all the concepts are absolutely wonderful. The costumes, they were works of art. The way they used the costumes to create part of the image, it was just absolutely mind-blowing. I thought I was going to come to see some amazing dancing, but I learned so much about the Chinese culture. They're actually telling you the story of their life, of their culture, of their history and bringing it full circle so that we can see and enjoy it. There was an encouragement to go back to that divine nature and those divine values. This experience for me is transcendent. It was a communication to the soul and the spirit. And I cried, I think, the whole time because it was so amazing. It was powerful and it is something that's needed in today's society. People nowadays go to the doctors, the psychiatrists for pills, for antidepressants. This. This is the antidepressant, the best. I knew it was going to be good, 
It's a billion times better than I even thought it would be. I've heard people say, you don't want to miss this, and I would fully agree. I'm going to tell everyone to come see it. You have to. Definitely going to come back next year. Totally inspirational. You have to go see this. Everyone needs to see this. Don't miss it. It's a once-in-a-lifetime must-see that will change their lives forever.